Warmer weather is quickly coming upon us, and with that in mind, I wanted to compile some of my best outdoor DIYs and hacks for you, so sit back, relax, and maybe even DIY right along with me. So let's get started. Every day, I pass this free wood pile, and I think to myself, I should really stop there and grab some of that free wood. It's just like calling my name. Let's get on the road. We are here to the free wood. Let's see what we can find here. So there's a lot of like broken pieces, but we'll just sort through this and see what we can find and see what we can build. Okay, so most of that was probably not fit for what we're doing or using it for. And it was probably not very wise of me to not bring gloves because they're, I could have easily gotten a sliver. I didn't, but we'll just see what we can make with this, but I'm probably gonna need to supplement with what I have at home. So let's head back. We are gonna try to build an end table out of the wood that we picked up from that free scrap pile, an outdoor one. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is start cutting down the board. So we are gonna get powerful. And again, my goal in doing projects like this with power tools is to really not necessarily get you to do the exact same projects as me, but really to inspire you to get out of your comfort zone and try something new. Maybe it's not using power tools, maybe it's something else, but we can do amazing things and surprise ourselves that it might not be as hard as you think. And we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so this is a, the underside of a patio paver that we are gonna actually use this as our end table topper. So we need to make the dimensions, which is 15 and three quarters by 15 and three quarters. So this is square and we are going to to build a frame based off of these dimensions. Okay, so these are used boards. So I'm gonna try to cut off where there are nails on the ends. Um, and they're a little weak on the ends anyways. So there's a darker side and then there's a lighter side. I think I'm gonna try to use the lighter side because it seems like the, the darker side has more heavy damage. So the first thing we'll do is cut off this end and then we'll make our dimensions. Remember safe is sexy ladies. So we cut off that one end and now we're gonna measure 15 and three quarters and we can just take our cut off piece here and use it as a marker so we know where to cut. And then you line up the edge of the blade with the edge of the line. You don't center it because otherwise you'll cut it too short. Okay, so we're gonna hang on to this because we may need it. So you can see that is perfect. So then what we'll do is write a tiny P somewhere and that way we know this is the pattern and so we can use it to make several cuts. And let's just start cutting. Okay, so now we're gonna build two sides first because that will help us to determine the design that we're gonna do. This is about two inches tall and I want it to be about 20 to 22 inches. So then we gotta measure this and that is just shy of three and a half. So we're gonna just call it three and a half for ease purposes because these don't have to be exact. Everything just needs to be cut equal. So what we need to do is that seven inches plus two inches is nine inches. So we've got nine inches of height right here to get it to the 20 to 21. We're gonna cut 12 inch lengths for the side pieces. So we're gonna take off as minimal as possible here because we are going to try to get two pieces out of one. So we're gonna just cut off the very edge that we can. Okay, and then we're gonna measure 12. Okay, so we need some support for the top. So then I cut an interior one, like so. 
and in theory it should line up so that will be the support on this side so we are going to try to attempt to build one of these side panels so we are going to attempt to do pocket holes here pocket holes here so i'm just going to kind of mark that we're going to do that so we know which side we want to do that on. And then what we're gonna do is we have this handy little contraption here and we are going to kind of center it up and then we just squeeze. And since it's kind of wider, we are gonna use the two outside pocket holes and we've got a preset. So there's really specific instructions on how to use these little jigs, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We just drilled two holes. And then there's a little release button right here. We release it and you can see that we have two pocket holes and we're gonna flip it over and do it on the other side. We've got our pocket holes for this piece and now we'll do the same thing for this. And it's easy peasy. And then it was wood glue, the pocket hole screws and we built like basically like a box for the front and a box for the back and now we need to make it secure because this is obviously not going to do much so what we're going to do is take our pieces here and run them into here using the same pocket holes so we'll do pocket holes boom and we'll screw them in like that and then we'll do one up top here too Once that was done, I just set it in place where I'm going to use it and I put the heavy concrete paver on top and it is very heavy. Now I did not apply mine with an adhesive like a liquid nail just because it was so heavy. I really don't think that it's going to need it, but you could definitely do that. I wanted the ability to remove that and move it around because it was so bulky <laughs> but it makes for a very solid piece and all in all I now have a really adorable end table that matches my outdoor furniture set really nicely it looks beautiful out here it was four dollars <laughs> you can't go wrong I just love it out here it's so cute I didn't do anything to finish it because I actually like grayed out wood with my furniture it looked really really nice but you can paint it you can stain it you can make it look however you want but I hope that gives you inspiration for some fun projects with some free wood that you might find on the side of the road. All right. <laughs> Do you remember this beam? This is left over from a project that we did uh, several episodes ago where we took a huge column and turned it into some oversized large candles. And now we are going to use it in conjunction with, oh my word, I think I'm going to lose this canopy. I hope not. It's getting pretty windy here, but we're going to use it in conjunction with these solar powered lights that I picked up at the Home Depot. Basically very simple project. We're going to just cut three at varying heights. Then we are going to bore out some holes with a wood boring bit and then stick them down like so into them. Maybe we'll paint them that black. We'll have to see, but let's just start by cutting random heights. I mean, we'll just figure it out as we go. So I'd like to get three pieces out of this. So we've got about 40 and a half inches and we're just gonna just kind of eyeball things here. Let's do the first one to 10 inches and then we'll go from there. Okay, so that's piece number one. And so then Let's stagger it about a palm width. That's so super scientific. That seems about good. All right, look how perfectly that worked out. So we've got three staggering heights. So the idea is, is that we'll drill holes down and we'll stick one of these in each one. 
and then we'll have a set of three. How fun will that be? And then I took out my drill. Not my drill, that's still to come. <laughs> I'm so excited for that to come, but a drill, we'll say. And I used a one inch wood boring bit on the tip of it. So the first thing we need to do is mark center. We'll go corner to corner and corner to corner. Okay, X marks the spot. We're just gonna put that spade down in it. And so should you. You guys, this is really hard wood. <laughs> this might not be as easy as I had hoped. I was hoping to get down really far, but this is not gonna be that easy. Okay, don't judge that I'm wearing flip-flops. You probably shouldn't be wearing flip-flops, but it's super hot. But I wanted to put it on something a little more sturdy and not wiggly at all and put my weight into it. This is gonna kill my battery, but it is working. So that's what I recommend. Hard surface, put your weight into it. Okay, before I keep doing this, let's test it out. All right, we're gonna test this out. Perfect. I do think I wanna get it a little lower though, cause that's kind of weird otherwise. And then what I did is I painted them out in a black chalk paint. No, it's up to me to say to you, I'm And then I took an epoxy kit. I could have probably been a lot more generous with this. And you could also use liquid nails, just some sort of permanent adhesive on the base of that solar lamp and put that on the bottom. And then I would then put it down into the hole and then let that dry. And that's it. So, so easy. I put these on my front porch. They can charge all day, get all the power, and then they light up your porch at night. And it was so simple to do. It is just a couple of cuts, drilling a large hole, gluing down a light fixture. So easy, very affordable as well. I could imagine that you could maybe make a smaller version of this using Dollar Tree ones. Such a simple project to do for your outdoors. Dress up your front porch, looks great, and I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so these are a couple of weathered barn wood that I picked up at Hobby Lobby six months ago, I don't know, a long time ago. But I figure if you have like some old fence pickets, cause it's very similar, that you can get the job done with that as well. I don't even know how tall that is, let's see. That's about 48 inches tall. I think they're about six inches wide. We are going to build a simple DIY address box that has like a little place for floral or herbs or whatever um, on the front. And I figured a good size for that would be 16 by 20. So that's what we're going to start out by doing is cutting down a couple of pieces, three pieces of 20 inches long length and we'll go to that point. <laughs> so these are straight cuts, super easy. If you don't have an electric miter saw, you can use a miter box for this as well. Okay, so we're gonna measure 20 inches. It doesn't seem very long, but it's gonna be just right. I'm gonna cut two boards at the same time. So just make sure that they're even together. Okay, and then we're gonna need a third one. So we're gonna hold on to this cause we're gonna need that. Hang on to that for sure. Okay, so this is the width and this is the back. This is the ugly side. I went into my scrap pile and found this piece and all we're gonna do is cut it approximately two of these cause we're gonna need one for here and one for the bottom really. Maybe we'll put a third one, but I don't know that will actually be necessary. So we'll just play that by ear. Yeah, so two of these and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so we need shorter nails in our nail gun. So we just put those in, close that. So this is basically how we're gonna attach it is we're gonna put some wood glue on this, but we're gonna flip it all over, but we're attaching it 
on the top and the bottom so that these boards would attach together. This is too thin for pocket holes, but the pocket hole would be a cleaner look, but it's just too thin for that. So we're going to just pull these aside, put these here and here, and then I'm gonna put some wood glue. Uh oh, I think I did this the wrong direction. Whoops. I always have wood glue all over me. Yeah, these gotta be laying the right thickness. Okay. Good thing that's on the back side. We are going to try to line this up. Just to make sure, we'll just measure so it's even. Let's see, that's a half inch. All right, now what we have to do, we'll do two nails in each. Okay, that looks pretty good and we'll just repeat on the bottom. Just make sure they're nice and snug together. All right, super easy. See, so now we can measure the width of this and it's 16 and 5 eighths and we are going to build like a little planter box here. This is a scrap piece from another one. This is not from our cutoffs. We're going to need this. <laughs> Now we need to figure out how deep we want our planter. Let's see what we've got left over of this board. And then we have a little bit of another board if we need it. That's 11 and a half. So if we cut that exactly in half, that would be five and three quarters. And then we have this little piece here if we need it. Okay, let's just do five inches because that feels like a good depth for it. So we'll do five inches, we'll make that cut, and then we'll cut a second one. So we've got the front piece. We've got the side pieces. Okay, so these are the side pieces, but we're gonna need something to go on the bottom here now depending on what you want to do, if you want to do it solid or if you want to just put like terracotta pots in here, you could do a slat. Let's think this through. This is all I have left, which is not quite big enough. So I'm going to have to play around with what I've got. Let me go see what I've got in my scrap pile. This one's going to be a little too short, but I wonder, interesting, what if I do? I do it like that, that's gonna work. And then I wanted to build out the planner part, but again, it didn't really have a lot to fasten itself to. If it was thicker, it would be as simple as shooting in some nails or screws or something like that. But I had to beef it up with some additional scrap wood, which was not too bad. And I was able to just kind of build out a frame to attach those boards to, and it wasn't that bad. I mean, this whole project took me not that much time, maybe an hour or two at the most, only because I was like trying to calculate it in my head. So not bad with working with just scraps. Like I said, if we were working with thinner wood, we probably wouldn't have to go to all of these extra efforts, but it's gonna be really cute. And it is now sturdy. Uh, we could do some drainage holes and things like that, but there are cracks that it, it can drain out of as well. Now we're gonna add our address and just for point of reference, I'm not actually doing my own address. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna add that now. Um, this will just hopefully give you a good idea. You can pick out whatever style of number that works for your house. And I attach those with screws and the screws are short so it went in super good. Then I needed a way to hang it and for my purposes I'd probably add a couple of them but I own, already had a screw outside and it's just one single screw and so I just kind of had to go with that. This is a little hack that I use all the time is I take a little tab off the top of a soda can and then I screw in a screw and it works as a hanging device. Works great! <laughs> so there's a little hack for you and then I just hung it on my exterior 
water screw outside. And then I got a variety of flowers that hopefully I'm not gonna kill that um, are beautiful and add a lot of vibrancy, a lot of color, and it's just so much fun. It's got a lot of personality, it just a different way to kind of spice up your house numbers instead of just putting them on the side of your house. You can add some flowers. Now, if you wanted to switch this out seasonally and do some Christmas greens or fall and pumpkins and leaves and stuff in the autumn time, a lot of flexibility in this house number. I love it. I think it's so much fun, so cute, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel lately, you will know we're trying to use up some things that I have already on hand. And I found these tiles years ago on the clearance rack, I think at Floor and Decor. And I just grabbed three of them. I don't know why, <laughs> but I think I did it because I had in my mind the idea of making a tray with it. So we're finally gonna do that. And I just think this would be really pretty. I don't know if you can see the design. Isn't that really pretty? And I think it would be a really cute outdoor tray. So we are gonna build this with scrap wood and these tiles that have been hanging around waiting for their turn and so here's what i found so what i came up with is i found some oak scrap wood scrap wood oak can you imagine in my pile i had some like a one by two of oak in my pile and i thought this would be a perfect thing to make a tray out of then i had mdf mdf is probably not the most ideal for outdoors but i figure most of it's covered and the bottom part is not going to be really exposed and really when i use it it's not going to be really taking on a lot of water so you might want to just keep that in mind and maybe use a different piece of wood but i just grabbed this piece because it was handy and i could cut it down to work it was right about the right size so we're making this work and then i just did a simple mitered out box And then glued and nailed that into the MDF board and then sanded it down so it was all nice and smooth. Will you look at that? For all intents and purposes, built like a frame or a sign or something, but we're gonna be using this as a tray. And we are ready to move on to stain. The first thing we're gonna do is condition the wood with some pre-stain and then just follow the directions on that. And then I bought this whitewash stain. We'll get onto that step. You should probably use a bristle brush, but I had this handy and so I'm just gonna just get this on here. This is just so the stain doesn't go on splotchy. Time for stain. We are going to go ahead and stain this of white and hopefully it will look good on this. <laughs> And then I decided to paint out the MDF because there were a little tiny, 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 tiny gaps in between the tiles. But this is something that I get see foresee myself just using to serve like drinks on and then I feel like I can wipe it down really well. But I didn't want the darker wood to kind of show through the, those tiny little cracks. Again, do this project the way you would see best. Then I just took some silicone adhesive and used that, and I used that to attach our tiles to the bottom of this tray and it fit perfectly, let that dry. Then I drilled two holes on either side for some beautiful handles that I found at Hobby Lobby on sale, of course, for $4.99 a piece. They were marble, they had gold accents, and I just thought that that would look really elevated and elegant and beautiful with this serving tray and attach those. And it turned out awesome. I love how this looks. I think it's a very beautiful project. I'm kind of regretting that I waited so long to go ahead and do it, but it turned out wonderful. I'm really thrilled with the overall look of it. And I think it's gonna be a fun tray to serve drinks on and maybe even use when we're doing our s'more station and put s'mores items on it. It's just gonna be overall a fun piece to have this summer outdoors. And it would also look good indoors. You could use this indoors. You could use it in a bathroom to store your perfumes on. So many possibilities with trays. I love doing them as projects because they're easy to do and just always good and handy to have around and I hope you enjoyed that. A couple of 
of years ago, we did an extreme makeover on my back patio here. I had been using it primarily as a workshop, but then I wanted to create a nice living space for my family to kind of extend the real estate of our home. It's covered, it's nice. We live in Florida and it's been working out really well. <laughs> <laughs> However, I still had to use out of necessity like a little corner of this patio to do my DIYs occasionally. I try to do it out on the grass, but sometimes the weather doesn't permit and I have to work underneath the patio. And so today it's looking for the most part really good, but there are some areas that need a little bit of cleanup and work. And while we're about sprucing it up, I thought we could do some outdoor DIYs, maybe use up some of the scrap lumber that I've got in my pile and just make it look really, really good through the help of Walmart, which I'll get into in a little bit. So let's just start out by assessing the situation, seeing what I have and we'll go from there, maybe build something and then do a really good cleanup and get it looking really, really good again. <laughs> it is what it is because my HOA won't let me build anything and we really love this area. So we're going to make it work. <laughs> okay. So this side doesn't look too terrible. I mean, obviously it's a little bit dirty. It's when we start getting over here and to this side where I kind of been using at my workshop. And as you can see here, I just finished a project, so that's why this looks particularly bad. It usually doesn't look quite this bad. And then walking around over here, I also want to clean out this. <laughs> I don't even know what happened here. So we're going to get this all cleaned up and organized. Just cleaning alone really elevates the space. When you have a clean environment, you just feel better. I will continue the cleaning process and get this place looking amazing. <laughs> it so deserves it. I wanted to point out right in each one of these sections there is like a little drain so if for some reason this did take on water you could drain it out from the bottom but this should be pretty watertight I love it because it kind of matches the plant stands that I built a few years ago and then you don't have to use this to store tools like this would be great for storing cushions and pillows and outdoor pool equipment so super super handy to have around it's really good quality i love it now let's load it up <laughs> Okay, so I've got some tools on this side. I have a few more that will go in there, but on this side, we're gonna now put any usable scrap that I think of value. Problem is, is I think everything has value, so that's gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna try to get rid of the really tiny stuff and focus more on things that I can actually probably make something out of, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna kind of sort this as we go. What I think I can use and what I'm not gonna use. Okay, now I've got to venture into snake territory right here. 
I'm a little scared, but we're gonna address it. And I think once we get rid of the mess, there will be less places to hide, hopefully. I don't know, we're gonna take care of it now. Wish me luck that I don't discover a snake. Hopefully he's already gone and I don't need to see him ever again. <laughs> and shop backing it all up. It looks so much better. I feel like it can go outside and hang out in this outdoor oasis. It's amazing. I am so excited. Okay, before we get everything all cleaned up fully and all the tools put away, I thought we could do a couple of DIYs. The first of which is I had this kind of aqua colored cart in my craft room already and I thought it would be fun to kind of convert it into a very simple grill cart or bar cart. I found some scrap wood in our cleanup that we're going to use and then everything that I have here has been in my stash. So I have these handles that are in my stash and some hooks, they're not matching. So we'll probably spray paint the handles black since we've got a lot of black in our design out here. And so we are gonna do that now, just a couple of cuts, a couple of nails, some glue and a little stain. And hopefully we will have a little topper that can set on top of this cart. And then we can use that as a grill cart. So let's build this very quickly. <laughs> so we are gonna measure the length here and that is 17 inches and then we already know that it's just about right on the depth. And so I'm, then I'm gonna decide whether I want to put some braces on the inside or if I want to wrap it. I'm leaning towards wrapping it to give us a little bit more space to do some hooks. We're gonna go make those cuts now. So we made some simple miter cuts all the way around. And used a little wood glue and some finish nails and nailed that into place and let that dry. Then I went ahead and took some wood filler that I made myself, filled in any nail holes and cracks that were needed and let that dry. Then I took a sander to it, sanded it all down as best I could. And then I had this like gray sponge little staining kit that I picked up somewhere. I got it on and it was a light gray color, which is kind of a nice beachy tone. It kind of has a butcher block feel to it. And then we let that dry. Now, if we're gonna be leaving it out, I'm going to probably need to go back and use a, a water sealer on it, but I think it will be under the covered patio area. So it's probably okay. And it needs a little time to set up before I do some kind of sealer coats. And then I spray painted the handles a matte black because we've got a lot of black out here for one, but for two, we wanted it to match our little hooks that we were putting on it. And so then we screwed that in into place and we also put on all the hooks. Now I eyeballed all of this and it turned out fine, but if you're meticulous, you may want to break out your measuring tape and do it that way. It worked out great for me. I think it looks fine, but that might bother some people. And this little cart is gonna be really fun to have around in this summer season and year round because I live in Florida. But I just thought this, this is all stuff that I had either in my crazy wood stash or you know up in my craft room and it worked out so cute so just think outside of the box reimagine some things and you can come up with a new purpose for this i love this car it's so super cute and i hope you liked it okay so i got my 
outdoor sofa set from Walmart a couple years ago. I love it. It's beautiful and holding up really, really well. It's a little dirty and so are the chaise lounges over by the pool here. So we are going to get out our pressure washer, pressure wash everything down, get it looking good. And then we're going to do some pots and we might replace some of the tired looking pillows and freshen it up, get it looking really good out here. Just to give you an idea of the power of a pressure washer, this is before and that is after. That is so disgusting, but we're gonna be having it look brand new. They're still drying, but these look almost as good as the day that I bought them. So I feel really good about that. And these two. So as you can see, we need to put a new top on that. I'm actually gonna take the little wood round that was on that, put it on this. The original one kind of fell apart because I never put a water sealer on it. So I'm gonna put a water sealer on this one and hopefully it will last a little bit better. You and I have worked really hard, have we not? <laughs> so we're pretty much clean. I do need to pressure wash our whole entire pool deck, but our hose is not long enough. So it just had to do with a good sweep and a chop back. Now we're to the pretty stuff. And I really think adding um, plants and all that is really good. And I cannot keep anything alive <laughs> if it's in a pot. I tried, I get busy, I either overwater, underwater it. You know what? Faux plants are now coming in to where they're not so taboo. <laughs> in fact, I know some very big name designers that will do faux plants even outside. The new stuff looks so realistic. And so I'm not gonna feel too guilty about it. I'll probably get harassed a little bit about it, but all the power to you who out there who can make anything grow. <laughs> I can if it's in the ground, mostly, uh, but if it's in a pot, it's a guaranteed death sentence and I don't wanna do that. I'm tired of feeling guilty about that. So I got these beautiful pots that we're gonna be making a couple of these to put around the pool area. I haven't decided whether we're gonna put them at the back on either side of the pool or if in the front area, I'm gonna kind of play around with it and see what looks good. And it turns out this styrofoam's gonna come in handy because I'm gonna put it in here and to, to lift it up. I don't want it to weigh a thousand pounds. So want it to be level. I'll show you what we're putting in. Okay, so I think this will be the last one. That looks pretty level. And then I might go find some rocks to give it a little bit of weight because we don't want it too lightweight, but we do not want it to weigh a thousand pounds either. And then what I was thinking is We'll put this topiary there and hopefully that's about the right height. And then I am just gonna take all of these silks are UV resistant. We'll just make sure that's in the center. And these look pretty legit. And then I think these ones look really cool hanging over the edge. So we're gonna put a few of these in. How's that looking? Here's how bad it is. I can't even keep like ferns alive. So <laughs> these ones are faux too. Shh. I know people are gonna say it's tacky, but I'm excited about it. And 
honestly, yes, FO. They've really, really improved that. And then I put in these little firefly lights. I'm not exactly sure if that's what they're called. They kind of twinkle at night and I think it kind of gives like the effect of fireflies, especially if there's a little bit of a breeze and it blows. It's so cute. They kind of like blink and everything. So much fun. And then my umbrella, of course, has the solar powered lights on the underside of it. Anywhere you can add some additional lighting, it adds ambiance. It's just a really nice touch and I love that idea. And then finally, it is all the just little finishing touches from the pillows to the, all of the accents. I had a mess on my hand because I was using it as a workshop and I kind of let it go a little bit too long. Just stay on top of it and, and you won't have to go to the amount of work that I did. It is so beautiful for this evening. I am so enjoying it. Wish you were here and so does Dolly. Do you wish they were here? Do you wish? Yes? I know in my childhood it was filled with water balloon fights. There's something nostalgic and fun about water balloon fights, but getting the balloons ready for that water fight can be kind of tedious. <laughs> So hopefully this next hack will make it a little easier and honestly, maybe a little bit better for the environment because it is reusable. So what you're gonna do is I just went to the Dollar Tree and picked up several packages of these two packs of sponges. You might be able to find a better deal elsewhere as well. I got them in the two different colors, an equal amount. So you could do this the long way and you cut them into half and then in half to, again and you get four strips. But I found that if you cut them the wider direction you got more out of them they were good for smaller hands I think that they might be a better way to do it and the way you do it this way is you cut them in half and then you cut those halves and thirds and then you get a total of six equal pieces and these do not need to be like perfect so you can totally eyeball this and just get them approximate and then you just kind of bunch them together take some elastic bands and wrap that around the center and then you kind of pull them out and tweak them and it kind of creates this like little orb thing like a spiky orb and they're just soft sponges so i did that with the pink and green ones and i bunched those together and then i did some in blue and yellow so that way if you're doing it on teams or if you're doing it in groups it's easy to sort out whose is whose i mean not that when all heck breaks loose with a water fight maybe it doesn't really matter but <laughs> Then you toss these into buckets. I picked these ones up from the Dollar Tree as well. So all you have to do is dunk the sponges and throw, dunk and throw, dunk and throw, instead of tediously and painstakingly filling water balloons, nodding them off only for them to pop a second later. It just makes sense, doesn't it? way to cool off and have a water fight but without all of the work that is associated with water balloons so i hope that that brings a little bit of fun to your life this summer i hope you like this next idea and it's got a lot of flexibility in it and so what you're going to do is take some kind of citrus piece of fruit so that could be oranges that could be limes in my case i decided to go with lemons and my lemons were really big so you can cut these or not cut these but in my case they were so big i had to kind of cut them I kind of just put them on the outskirts of a cylinder vase so you can take the principles of it and apply it any way that suits your needs. And then what I did is I took some tulips in these kind of orange and yellow colors. I thought this was really pretty. And I just kind of tucked them down in the center. And then the way the tulips fall is really, really simple and beautiful and elegant. I love that look. I also have seen this look done with hydrangeas. You could do this with roses, whatever's in your garden. The idea really is just getting some summery citrus items in the glass vase. It really kind of elevates the look of 
of the arrangement and provides that summertime cheer. And so hopefully you can take that and adapt it to your favorite flower and make it work for you. Simple, easy, classy arrangement, and anybody can do this, I promise. No fancy floors degree required. <laughs> Okay, so we are gonna be making a simple tabletop s'more setup. In case you have like a gas grill or you are having some other kind of dinner party, or maybe you just want to have a fun little treat on an evening, you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of doing a fire. This is like a compact way to do it. And so you can take just a simple terracotta pot, which is universally available. I got one at Hobby Lobby for $1.50 on their 50% off sale, or I found this one also at Hobby Lobby that had the little legs on it and I'll tell you what if you do the regular terracotta pot you are gonna probably want to elevate it somehow anyways whether you set that on like a piece of stone or something you do kind of want to lift the heat off because what we're gonna do is turn this into like a little mini charcoal like holding thing so that's why I liked this one if you can't find this one just elevate it somehow put it on a piece of wood separate it from your table somehow then what you're gonna do is you're you're going to line your pot with some tin foil and I would use heavy duty and you're gonna make sure that that is all covered then you're gonna take some barbecue charcoal briquettes and put it in there make sure there's a little bit of space in between you don't want it like super compacted you know for things to burn there needs to be a little oxygen of course and I use the pre-lit ones just cuz it eliminate the step and I found that it does work. And then you light your briquettes and let them get nice and charcoaly. If you were planning on doing this at a dinner party, I think it would be a really fun little piece to have going while you're eating dinner as like decor. And I don't know, I just kind of think that that would create a little bit of an ambiance. And while you're eating, then it kind of can burn down and get to that nice charcoaly stage that you need to roast marshmallows on. I had some marshmallow roasting sticks. Now you don't need marshmallow roasting sticks to do this. You could simply use bamboo skewers and then roast your marshmallows. Now this is a little side hack if you want to keep things simple. I really like using the fudge stripe cookies because they've got the chocolate and kind of the graham cracker vibe all ready to go but you could do the traditional s'mores as well and there's a lot of fun ways to make the s'mores fancy. There's a lot of fun ways you can do your s'mores but the idea here is you just have a compact thing you don't have to have the whole muss and fuss of a big barbecue or a fire and you can still get that summer s'mores experience not me just because i'm not eating sugar doesn't mean that my kids can't have some let's bring them out and have them make some s'mores let's make some s'mores boys Okay, so maybe this is the same like dinner party. Maybe it's like a fun pool party and it starts to get dark outside. And here is a fun hack for you for your drink bin with the ice. You throw in your ice in your bucket that you're gonna put all of your drinks in and it's starting to get dark outside, but here's a little fun element you can do. You break off some glow sticks, just crack them and you tuck them down underneath the ice and it makes the ice glow. <laughs> and so not only will you be able to see your drinks a little bit better, but it adds a little bit of spice, a little bit of fun at nighttime to have glowing ice. How much fun is this? It's so easy to do. It's just shoving in some little glow sticks into your ice bucket. Lots of fun colors. You could do it all one color, but I liked the kind of mixture of colors. And I thought this would be a really fun thing to do at a party. Now on the same note of glowing things, we have a pool. Now, if you don't have a pool, you can take this idea and kind of adapt it. I thought it would be really fun to have glowing balls and glowing floating devices. And so I found these little floating tubes at the Dollar Tree. You might want to get some bigger ones. These ones were kind of smaller than I was thinking. I should have expected for $1.25 that they would be a little on the smaller side. And then 
I got some balls. Now at my Dollar Tree, they actually had a glow in the dark ball that was ready to go. Now, if you can't find that, they do have these other blow up beach balls and the same principle applies for all of these items. What you do is you break the glow sticks, shove them through the blow up hole. And sometimes it doesn't wanna go through at first, but once you get one fed through, it's easy to get more feeding through. So it's just kind of getting that first little portion of like the little stem to open and shoving those in. I put three in my tubes. I would recommend doing about five just for a bigger glow. It still worked for, and it was really fun. Now for my little beach ball that glowed, the one that I got at the Dollar Tree and there was only one of them, it was the only one that I could find, but you could probably order these online. I'll make sure to link them below if I can find them. You break the big glow stick and you shove that. There's like a special hole in the ball where you can shove that and then you can get refill ones and just replace them and use that all summer long. And if you don't have a pool, the ball would be really fun to kind of play kickball or just play around with a ball that glows in the dark. It's so, so much fun. And I just envision if you are really trying to have an epic pool party, having a whole bunch of glowing balls floating around in the pool, I think it would be so much fun and really make for a memorable summer party. So I hope that this gets your wheels spinning, gives you some ideas of how you could implement that. If you are doing like a beach ball, the blow up ones that you have to blow up yourself, I would probably probably put about four or five in there. But if you can find the ones that already have like the spot for the big glow stick, I would definitely go that route. So much fun with glow in the dark stuff. And I hope that brings a whole lot of fun for your summer. So this next one is a project that I did actually two years ago. So that's why I know this is a really good hack because it's still holding up. Maybe you have some tired patio furniture that's starting to look rusty and faded and ugly. I did. But the Shays lounges and sometimes patio furniture can get really expensive very quickly. So instead of checking them and buying new stuff, give them new life. I did this by just taking some black spray paint and giving it a fresh spray. And I covered it on the underside and then I flipped it over and spray painted it on the other side. And I wasn't even sure that this was gonna work or last, but I figured if I got one more summer out of it, I would be good. Well, that was two summers ago and we're about to go into our third summer with these spray painted shades lounges here and they are holding up amazing. In fact, like if I needed to touch up a little spot here or there, they are just Fine. I have just been totally blown away. It really did work. That was in a patio makeover that I did a couple summers ago and then it's holding up so well. So maybe instead of tossing out your tired looking furniture, just spray paint it and give it new life and hopefully that will save you a ton of money. Okay, so I am probably one of the lucky few. I don't get sunburns too often. Because of this, it makes me sometimes forget to do really good with sunscreen. I'm trying to do better about it but inevitably sometimes you stay a little too long out in the sun and you end up with a sunburn so here's a little hack for your kids when they get a little bit too much sun you might want some aloe and it's hot and it's stingy and it hurts the aloe is nice and soothing but if we can make it even a little cooler make some fun little aloe ice cubes. I found these really cute summer looking ice cube trays. They're silicone. I think you can even look like in the cake decorating supply area at your Walmart and there's all kinds of different options. Dinosaurs, teddy bears, butterflies, all of that. And you just take your aloe gel and you squeeze it into the tray, tap, tap, tap throw it in the freezer, keep it in the freezer so that when you do get a sunburn or maybe you've got a cut or maybe you've got some fire ants, we get those here in Florida, you can take one of those aloe ice cubes out, rub it onto the owie. <laughs> I'm such a mom. <laughs> and then make it feel so good. And it's just kind of silly, but I like the idea of the frozen aloe because it's gonna be really soothing and the shapes are just more for kind of fun. So put that in, keep it in your freezer so you can pull them out as you need them. And I hope that helps some of you out. Okay, so for this next hack, what you're gonna need is a shower curtain. And I picked one out at Target just to kind of demonstrate. What you're looking here is you're not looking for the plastic ones. You're not looking for the totally fabric ones, but there's like a 
fabric plastic one, if that makes sense. It's not really plastic, but it's definitely a more water repellent fabric type of shower curtain. And you're gonna use this at the beach maybe, but also on your picnics because it's very wipeable, it's easily clean, easily washed, and it's not sticky underneath you like a plastic shower curtain would be, but it's not hot and heavy like a blanket. There's lots of fun prints that you can find, so you could have a lot of fun picking out one that suits your personality. But the idea is, is you use it in lieu of a regular blanket, out picnicking, out on the beach, and it's water repellent and stain resistant and mildew resistant and all of that good stuff. So I know it's a little unconventional, but if you have an old shower curtain that would work that maybe you don't like the style of, you could use it as a picnic blanket instead. And there you go, <laughs> kind of random, but hopefully it helps you out this summer. Okay, it gets really hot here in Florida, especially in the summer. So what do you do for that? You either go in the pool or you eat popsicles, of course. But popsicles can start to melt really fast if you're not eating them fast enough and then they get all over your hands and they're sticky hands. It's just kind of annoying. I don't, I know I don't like sticky hands and as a mom, I really don't like constantly cleaning sticky hands because sometimes those little hands don't want to cooperate very well when they're younger. My kids are a little bit older now, but I hope this will give you grandmas and mothers out there and frankly, myself, I will totally use this hack. It's easy. Take a cupcake liner, shove your popsicle stick through that cupcake liner. It's a very easy and that cupcake liner will catch all of the sticky and keep your hands clean. It's a super, super simple summer hack and I hope that it helps you out and keeps your hands nice and not sticky. <laughs> Do you want a water fountain but don't want to hardwire one? This next hack you're gonna love. We are gonna be doing like a solar powered fountain planter thing. So the first thing I did is I got a similar black urn pedestal base to the other pedestal bases that I have on my front porch. And then I took kind of another black planter and flipped it upside down and kind of tried to level it out. And then what I did is I added some herbs in in this pot some like oregano and thyme and I thought that would be kind of a cute little herb garden <laughs> so with those planted up I kind of tried a couple of different combinations with some other black pots but it wasn't really working for me so I went to some stores to kind of see what other options there were and then I found this really cool big heavy duty plastic bowl from Ross. And so I bought it and then I set that right on the un upside down portion of that one pot that we kind of tucked down in the soil. And then I put some river stones that I picked up at the Dollar Tree into the base of that. And then I added our solar fountain feature. What you wanna do is you peel off the little top portion and you submerge it into the water as quickly as possible so it sucks that water right in and it will start working. It works fantastic in the daytime really, really well. There's a lot of little different toppers that you can put on it. It also does have the straws that kind of keep it in center if you want. And here's the other thing is when it's spraying all this water out the sides, I'm like, hey, it's watering the plants for me. It's letting me off the hook a little bit. Maybe it will stay alive. <laughs> and so I'm like, that's a benefit to me. But, and then it just works on its own. And then during the day, it kind of stores energy. So at night, it has this really cool effect where it lights up, it changes color. And it's just kind of like something fun in front of my house and I, love how this turned out so it's awesome and i hope you loved it too maybe you're going on a picnic maybe you're going to a park and you don't want to lug along a big barbecue but you want to have some burgers and hot dogs or some other yummy things and maybe roast some marshmallows this hack is for you all you're going to need to do is go to the dollar tree and pick up a big roaster pan and a cooling rack then you're going to take some self-lighting charcoal and put that into the roaster pan and kind of spread it out. Then all you need to do, since it's already like kind of soaked in that, that fuel, is light the charcoal kind of all over and let it heat up. And then I made a tent with some aluminum foil to kind of keep that heat in, get the charcoal going, and then we could put our burgers on. Now I very comfortably got four large burgers and a couple of hot dogs on there. I could have definitely squoze on a couple extra hot dogs. 
and I tinted it with that aluminum foil and let it cook and then you know it just cooked like you normally would with a grill. Let's see how we're doing here. I got my little tongs. We're gonna pull it off. Ooh, that's looking good. Oh those hot dogs are looking beautiful. Flip. Oh my word this is beautiful. I can't believe this. This is totally working. These are perfect. Let's just kind of tint this again. Oh, they're looking perfect. Look at this. This is totally doable, you guys. Oh, those are good. Look at those beauties. Total beauties. Let's just kind of lift up and see how these are looking. I think they need a little bit more time, but they're about done. The time I got. I thought I might try to toast a bun here. Because that would be fun. What it means to grow. Oh, yeah, now I know. These burgers look perfect. Perfect. There's definitely enough heat going on this. You could do another round of burgers and hot dogs and maybe even uh, roast some s'mores. Then you're gonna wanna make sure that it's fully cooled before you dispose of it. So if that's dousing it in dirt, dousing it in water, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is fully cooled and then you can wrap it all back up in the tin foil and dispose of it properly. Just make sure that there's no possibility of starting any unwanted fires. Just be, be very careful. So the ultimate way to tell if this hack was a success is to taste test and we'll just see. Oh yeah, try it out. So for our next outdoor home hack, if you have some mosquitoes, you're gonna wanna take note because our next hack is a decorative mosquito repellent. All you'd need to do for this is take a fresh lemon and a fresh lime, slice them up in slices, and then you're gonna kind of rotate those in a jar, and then you're gonna add a couple of sprigs of rosemary, and you're just gonna place it all in there, make it look pretty, and then over the top of that, you're gonna just add water. Now, I have three of these containers. I got these containers at the Dollar Tree. They're really pretty. I like that they have lids, and you'll see why in just a second. And then you're gonna wanna add some essential oils. Now, there are several essential oils that kinda keep away the bugs, keep away the mosquitoes. The recipe suggests that you add about 10 to 15 drops of rosemary. I did about 10 drops of rosemary, but I also added 10 drops of TerraShield, which is doTERRA's version of mosquito repellent. It works really good. By Revive, there's one called Bugs Away. Lavender essential oil is also really good at repelling mosquitoes and bugs. So there's lots of options and whatever fragrance works best for you. And then I just took some tea lights. You could take floating candles and I lit them. I think fire detracts the mosquitoes. So the combination of all these fragrances plus the candle really helps to repel the bugs. I think these would make such a beautiful centerpiece, but you could put them around your outdoor area, light them. They smell amazing to me. It's a mystery to me why this would repel bugs because it smells really good and it's really pretty. And so this is a really good hack for you. The awesome thing is, is when you're done, you could blow out the candle, leave the candle in if you want, or you can pull them out, but put the lids on, put them in your fridge until like the next night if you want to reuse them. So this is one that can last a little bit. And this is one that would be really good for like an outdoor gathering this summer. So I hope that you enjoyed this hack. So my next hack was inspired by one of my viewers, Gail Barnett, she suggests using Listerine as a mosquito repellent. So I did a little research on this and it does actually work. And in addition to it, you can actually use the generic mouthwashes. Just go find the ones that are strong um, in the minty flavors. The mint is a repellent as well, but there's also some ingredients in the mouthwash that helps to repel those bugs and mosquitoes. So for my version, I took some mint mouthwash and I combined it with about a cup to a cup and a half of a I think it's a mint eucalyptus Epsom salt and 
all of those fragrances as well as the Epsom salt kind of repel the bugs. I also found recipes out there that included flat beer. That is another option for you to kind of put in this natural mosquito repellent. Now, Gail recommended spraying your screens and your doors to kind of keep the bugs away from them, but you can also use this on plants and around your yard. Um, you would need to make it in a little bit bigger quantity if you're going to really be using it out in your garden and out in your yard. Um, and it would probably be a little bit more expensive than like a traditional bug spray. But what's really cool about it is it's all natural. And here's the other thing. The mint coupled with like the eucalyptus and all of these scents, it smells super good. I'm like, how is this going to detract the mosquitoes? Because it smells really good. <laughs> it, it smells so good that you can actually spray it on yourself. It does kind of feel a, a tad sticky, but I think a lot of the bug sprays that you spray on your body are a little bit sticky and it smells a lot better than those type of bug sprays. So there's lots of options with this mosquito repellent and I hope you find it beneficial. So maybe you've got an outdoor gathering planned and you want a really fun and different way Way to keep your drinks cool. Well, this next hack is a lot of fun and it will kind of add like a beautiful touch to your drink cooling. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna take some flower heads. And now I just picked up a bunch from Walmart, but you could go out into your garden and just pick some little flowers to go in these. I thought it would be really cute with pansies or violas. I only had these daisies to work with, but you break off the heads of them and then you take a balloon and you kind of take your fingers and stretch it out. It would be easier if you had two people doing this, one to stretch and one to drop the flower in. It was just me, so it was a little tricky, but we got the job done, put the flower inside the balloon, and then you fill it up with water. Now, you'll see in a second that you may want to consider using like a distilled water or something for your version because I think it will give you a little clearer water. We'll get to that in just a second. The next thing you need to do is freeze it and I would recommend freezing it 8 to 12 hours. I think that's about the amount of time you need for like a snowball sized ice cube that you've got going here and then you pull them out once they're frozen and kind of clip off the edge and peel back the balloon and it reveals this beautiful kind of decorative ice. Now what I will tell you is it actually looks prettier once it starts to melt a little bit because it removes that initial layer of frost and kind of reveals a clear thing and I do believe that if you use like a distilled water or something that's been filtered a little bit more than my bathroom sink water you would get a little bit clearer shot of those flowers and there's just a lot of possibilities on this and then you can just throw it in a bucket throw your ice on it I only did this small amount but you could do a huge bowl or bucket out of this and I think it would be really cute but I hope that brings a little personality to your summer events so this next half is how to create an easy tabletop fire bowl because maybe you don't have an outdoor fire pit maybe you don't have the room for it it's a lot of work and expense but you could do a tabletop fire bowl now i did this initially in one of my ikea hacks last summer it was a huge hit i love how it went and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a bowl that you like in this case i found a terracotta one that i really like the shape of but i didn't like the color of it but you could totally leave the color alone this part is totally optional and I ended up spray painting the inner part in this really pretty shimmery gold and the outside a really pretty satin black and then I thought that looked really really cool I first uh, stuck in these like chafing cans that have the fuel that you use to kind of keep food warm they do sell that some at the Dollar Tree but I actually found that the ones on Amazon are a better deal because they burn longer plus you don't have to switch them out as often which is nice because they'll burn for about six hours and then I kind of just put all the empty bags and like random stuff so we didn't have to totally load it down with some stones but I picked up these black stones from the Dollar Tree and I filled it up Sometimes I understand and it just adds such a nice little ambiance to your evening to your gathering and then also provides you a way to you know toast some 
marshmallows and make some s'mores. And I just think it's a really fun and easy summer hack. If you haven't created a fire bowl, I'd highly recommend it because it's a lot of fun. Do you have a pot that looks a little like this? Black, but it's kind of dull, it's plastic. Well, I've got a hack for you. This is another use for WD-40. This won't be a permanent fix, but it should last you a good while. What we're gonna do is just spray this on and rub it all over and it will give us a nice like new shine. How awesome is this? Seriously, gotta love WD-40. <laughs> Now you may have to repeat this one a couple of times during the summer. It's not a permanent fix, but it will last a while and it's a really quick and easy way and you don't have to like replace the pot. So I hope that helps you. Oh my heck, how many of us have oil spots on our driveway? Tell me I am not alone. Those darn leaky cars. And we have a paver driveway that had a lot of oil on it so let's see how to fix it so i got this off of amazon it's a decreaser it had really good reviews so we're going to see if this works I, I also got this little brush so what we're going to do is we're going to pour this on our grease spots scrub it really good let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and then i'm going to break out our power washer and power wash our driveway After two treatments, I would say this process gave me about a 60 to 70% improvement over what it was before. So I am really happy with these results, but I think that if I give it a couple more treatments, I can get it all the way removed because this has been sitting on our driveway for months now and it might take a little extra effort to get it all the way out. Now, this was in a video like last summer. You may or may not have seen it. I got a lot of comments in the comment section on that video that there are a lot of other really cool oil removing hacks including coca-cola i have not tried that one out yet so let me know if you've got some fun hacks on removing oil oh goodness it is hot outside oh it's, i got my personal fan if you've seen me talk about this in my amazon episode <laughs> i just need it to cool off for a second you might need one of these this summer this is not a hack but just a little helpful tip i will link this in the description box below because whoo it is warm it is definitely getting hot outside okay now back to the hacks i love little kind of trash to treasure hacks and this one is a really good one if you have some fabric softener bottles or maybe you have a milk jug or maybe you have an orange juice container you can reuse them and turn them into a awesome watering can so what you're going to want to do is like for me, I just removed all the labels, washed it out really, really well inside and out and got it really clean. And then I personally took my, I have a hot pen, which is meant for cutting like styrofoam and other plastics. And I knew that it would be perfect for this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the lid of whatever your container is and poke several holes in the lid to where water could potentially come out. So just poke, 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 poke. The hot pin makes this super easy and I use it for my crafting. So multi-purpose and it's not very expensive. I'll link it below. But if you don't have a hot pen, what you can do is take a nail and heat it up with like a lighter and poke that through. Um, you can you know just take a nail and hammer it through there's lots of ways to get a hole the other place you want to put a hole is kind of like right above the handle um, poke another hole in there and you'll see why that's important in just a second and that's it and then you fill it up with water and you take it out and you can water your planters with it and the cool thing about that hole right where the handle is is you can kind of control the flow in some cases you can kind of stop the flow altogether but most cases it's going to slow it way down and then you lift it up and then you get the full flow so just whatever you're looking for it's kind of handy to have that around and you have a perfectly acceptable and in my case even beautiful watering can was something that I would have just tossed in the recycle bin and so that was free to me and it's gonna work great all summer long and so I love that say you have some glass on a front door or an exterior door and you want a little privacy but you don't want to spend a ton of money because that 
those frosting films that you get that are meant for doors are kind of pricey but guess what there is a very cheap substitute and you can pick it up at the dollar tree and that is just their regular clear contact paper it works great for adding privacy and a frosted look so to do this just cut out your one dollar contact paper just a little bit larger than the window pane lightly mist with a water bottle and then stick your contact paper to the window and smooth it out using some kind of flat scraping tool. Then you're gonna take a razor blade and cut off the excess as close to the edge as possible. Now my water bottle went a little overboard and was pretty blotchy with the way the water sprayed out. And a few days later, the water bubbles are still dissipating. And then in my case, you know, the, the bubbles did eventually disappear and it, looks completely like frosted glass. You would never in a million years know that this was contact paper from the Dollar Tree and you did it for potentially under a buck depending on how much glass you need to cover. But isn't that a fun and easy, inexpensive hack that gives you a little privacy? Say you're going to the beach, say you're going to a pool and you don't really wanna haul around your purse but you might need a little extra cash. This next hack is for you. All you're gonna do is take a chapstick or some kind of lip balm container and then you're gonna want to empty it out I threw mine into the microwave to soften it up a little bit and then you take a q-tip and then you're gonna take a toothpick and maybe some paper towels and you're just gonna clean it out really really well just wipe it down really good you might even want to remove the label to make it look even more boring the, the more boring the less enticing right the better and then you have a perfect perfect container to hold some cash that is super inconspicuous. So all you're gonna do is kind of fold your cash lengthwise first and then you're gonna roll it up really, really tight and then you're gonna put it on the inside of this tube and put on the lid and that is it. And nobody's gonna wanna steal that because who's gonna wanna steal like somebody's nasty old chapstick, really? It's so gross, like if you think about it. And then really cool, all you have to do is kind of twist it up and your cash comes out. And there you go, you can pay for all of your summer refreshments and you don't have to carry around a purse and nobody's gonna steal it and so it's awesome. That's just like a super easy hack. You may have seen that before, but I just thought it, it's so brilliant, so genius to kind of find like something completely that nobody's gonna be interested in and store some valuables. This is gonna be an easy build. So even if you're a beginner, you can totally do this. We might use a miter saw and some power tools, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through that process. From my fireplace build, I have a whole bunch of these two by threes that I've had forever. We are gonna turn them into some kind of tall planters. We are gonna cut these down. So let me show you how to use the saw. It's easier than you might think. So we are gonna start cutting some wood, a lot of wood. So I'm gonna show you how this works. There's usually a button here, mine's yellow, and you pull that with your thumb, and then you wrap your hand around this and pull it with your hand, and when you squeeze the two together at the same time, it turns it on. That's as easy as it is. I'm gonna plug this in, and we're gonna put on our safety glasses, looking good. Those are dirty. All right, put on our safety glasses and we are ready to start cutting. I'm gonna wear gloves because these have a lot of slivers on these ones. Okay, and then we can use this as a pattern. I'll put a P on it for pattern. We've used up pretty much all of our two by threes and two by fours to build one planter. <laughs> I was hoping to get a little good start on a second one, but it really took up the wood. We are gonna just be attaching these with screws and we are going to just pre-drill some holes and we're gonna just put one screw in each area, building a whole bunch of boxes and then we're gonna hook them all together and you'll see how in just a second. So let's get drilling. These ones are the longer ones. This is a shorter one. We're gonna shoot the screws in this way. Okay, so we've got some pilot holes. 
any warped edges I'm gonna try to put on the inside. Make sure it's lined up on all sides. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty sturdy and we'll just build a whole bunch of them and then we're gonna stack them together. I'd originally planned on taking it up a bit taller, but I'm really happy with this height. And of course I want two of them, so I decided to hang on to the extra pieces and use them for my other planter. And I'll probably still have to get some extra lumber for that. Isn't this fern so pretty? I think it's gonna be gorgeous when it's all said and done. So I've just kind of set this in here so you can kind of see what it looks like, but let's lift this out because I've got to show you what we're gonna do next. So all of these boxes are kind of separate, but we need to attach them. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna cut down some one by two for the front long side and then this one by three see if I can do this without dropping it to kind of hide all of that and then we'll use a little wood glue and finish nails and nail them all into place and that should kind of hold them together and we've got some kind of ominous weather looking I hear some thunder I haven't seen any lightning but I'm kind of hoping it holds off so that I can keep building we're kind of working around some weather this week I just take my one by twos and my one by three and hold it up to where we're placing them and kind of make a mark where we need to make cuts. Then after I make the cuts, I just take some wood glue and a nail gun and nail them into place. Now, if you don't have a nail gun, you could definitely do this part by hand. The first couple you nail into place may want to move around, so you wanna give it a little support as you go. looking pretty good right <laughs> I love that if you wanted to do kind of a natural look I would go ahead and get some natural colored wood putty fill in the holes and kind of give the whole thing a good sanding and then you're gonna want to find something to seal it with it's actually a really pretty look I'm gonna go ahead and paint mine black but first before we paint them we need to build a second one well this one is really nice and we built it with screws which is you know if a drill is something that a lot of people have on hand it took a while, so I am breaking out my big framing nailer and we are gonna bust the second one out in no time. I like this gun. This nail gun is the coolest. <laughs> so we'll fill in the holes, let it dry, and then probably tomorrow, we're gonna be painting a bunch of stuff tomorrow. Because of the rain delays and all that, I am gonna delay one of my bigger projects for probably the Extreme Makeover. So you'll have to stay tuned for that, but I've got another really fun one coming up. Now it's time for the big guns. Oh yeah. <laughs> Protective eyewear for this is a must. Woo! See? Look how fast that is. One down, several more to go. <laughs> but that was way faster. Now we're gonna fill in the holes with some wood putty and seal the crack with some caulking that I had on hand. And since we're painting it, I felt like I didn't really need to match up the color because it didn't really matter. This is what I've been dealing with this week. Just lots of rain delays. <laughs> After it's dry, I sand it down and I use the same paint I used on my front door in my recent front porch makeover episode. I believe the color is called caviar. I do one good coat and then I go back in and touch it up a little bit with a light second coat. You'll notice at the tops that I did add a couple of cleats and that's because my pot didn't end up fitting in there as well as I had hoped. So just keep that in mind when you are making yours. But I just love how my scrap wood planners came out. You could totally make these with one by threes and one by fours if you want something that doesn't weigh quite as much as these ones because these are definitely sturdy. We are taking this pot and we are going to be creating an umbrella stand slash end table. We are going to 
to take a PVC pipe and cut it down to fit underneath. And then I'm gonna take some Gorilla Tape and kind of like tape it down to the bottom right in the center. And then we are going to put cement in the bottom. Now, I'm not gonna fill it all the way up because I don't want it to weigh a thousand pounds, but I do wanna fill it up far enough that I feel like it will be heavy enough to hold an umbrella in place if the winds pick up and not be tipped over. And that ended up being about 40 pounds of cement. And I just added that little by little, adding water each time and kind of mixing it up as I went. And then when it was full enough, I kind of just bounced it a little to even everything out and have it settled down. And then I wiped all the edges and cleaned up any mess on the rim and let that dry overnight. While that's setting up, I'm going to take a wood round, a decorative wood round that you have seen me use on this channel in all of my Way Cool Dirt Cheap episodes. I've used these wood rounds for trays. I've used these wood rounds for a lot of things and I thought it was the perfect size and kind of thickness to create a little tabletop. We're going to mark where center is and then I take a one and a quarter inch hole saw and saw out a hole and my battery on my drill was kind of dying in this process <laughs> so i ended up having to pause while it charged but it eventually did make it through then i simply stained the top in a briar smoke gel stain which is the same kind of undertones as our pot is and i let that dry for a few hours Then I took some wipe on poly and polyurethaned the entire thing. Once that was dry, we put our top onto the pot, make sure the holes are centered up and then we slip our awesome new cabana striped umbrella in through the holes and that will hold everything together where it should be. I don't permanently affix the tabletop because you never know when you need a little extra hidden storage. But I just adore how this turned out. It is super stable and it's quite heavy for me to handle, which is good, I think, because it means the umbrella is not going anywhere. Now here's something extremely awesome about this umbrella. It has solar powered LED lights and it lights up at night and it has like an on off switch and everything. This was just another opportunity to add some ambiance in a place that people want to hang out at night. So for this next one, we're doing a double hack. <laughs> we are doing a fake plant and a boys and bar little pot. Now this is a smaller version. I did actually a little bit larger version in a past Ikea hack episode. I'll link that and all of my Ikea hack episodes in the description box below. So if you want to see how I did that, basically this is going to go inside here and you could leave it as is. But for me, I like to design things to the nines, <laughs> maybe a little bit over the top sometimes. I don't know. I created this little stencil that we are going to actually put on the front of our pot. And then we're gonna just take some black chalk paint and just chalk paint this on. Now, this little stencil is my definition of fake for the name of the plant. It translates to fake or a plant that you can't kill but still looks real. And if you watch my channel, you know that if I put things in a pot, I'm a surreal plant killer. <laughs> And I don't mean to be, but I just end up killing plants. I just put this silly little definition together for this. Now, if you don't have the ability to cut a stencil, I have not forgot you. I have a free printable, which I will link in the description box below. You can size this to whatever you want. Just take some graphite paper and transfer it onto your pot and then take like a paint pen or paint with a little brush. I've done this like on pillows and all kinds of things in the past and it works out really great. I've been seeing all these plant st stands around and I thought it would be really fun to create a little plant stand. So I have a three quarter inch dowel that I picked up at Hobby Lobby for $1.50. I think we can get the job done with this one 36 inch dowel. Now I've seen these made uh, several different ways online. I've seen them made with just glue, which doesn't seem very sturdy. And then I've also seen it done probably the proper way where they kind of cut out and then chisel out and do like a, do a little crisscross pattern and kind of like 
smash them together. That's probably the correct way to do it. But I wanted to offer an option that was a little bit more sturdy than glue, but maybe a little bit easier than the crisscross chisel option. And here's what I came up with. We are going to take our dowel and make these cuts, either on a miter box or on a miter saw like you see me doing here. The cuts are four at six inches, one at four and a quarter inch and two at one and five eighths inch, which you should be able to get out of one dowel. And once we have those cuts, we are going to pre-drill a hole exactly in the center of the four and a quarter inch piece. Then we are going to take what is called a screw dowel, and you've seen me use these on my channel before, and we will place that in a drill and tighten it up as if it were like a regular drill bit. And we are going to simply drill that through that hole. And you want a little bit of screw dowel on either side of your wood dowel. <laughs> How many times can we say dowel? <laughs> then we're going to pre-drill some holes in the centers of the two one and five eighths inch pieces and add a little wood glue to those and then simply twist those on to either side of that screw dowel until they are nice and tight. Then I took mine outside so I could use my nail gun to then glue and shoot nails into the legs. And I kind of propped it up on a two by four board to keep everything the same height while doing this. If you don't have a nail gun, you could use smaller screws on each of the legs or just use some finished nails and nail them in by hand. Then you can fill in those nail holes with some wood putty, or there's a little hack that I recently learned that will give you the perfect match, and it's next to free. You can just take a little tiny bit of that wood glue and some of the sawdust from your cutoffs and kind of mix that together with the glue and fill in those holes that way. And once that's fully dried, you give everything a good sanding and do a clear coat over the top and let that dry. Now, if I were to do this again, I'd probably make the stand prior to doing our stencil because as you can see here, a little bit of our definition gets cut off by it. So I probably would have made this stencil a little bit smaller if I was planning on putting it on a stand, but it's okay. <laughs> Together or separate, I absolutely love this double Ikea hack. The cement pot is a very easy Ikea hack, and the plant stand is probably a little bit harder, but much easier than the chiseled method. But I just think this is so super cute. Most of the supplies that I got for this project were from the Dollar Tree, except for a couple. And those items were basically the lemons and a dowel. The first thing we're gonna do is start out by taking a little pot that I got from the Dollar Tree. They come two in a pack. It's a little terracotta pot, and then we're gonna take our black chalk paint and paint the entire thing so it has a nice black finish to kind of go with our whole overall motif. And then what we're going to do is just take any foam and shove just enough to be nice and firm inside there. And then we're going to need a dowel and we're going to just cut this down to, to fit. And I haven't even decided the size yet, so we'll kind of just eyeball this. So I'm going to just go with about that long. I'm gonna measure it right now so you guys have an exact measurement. <laughs> I'm so scientific sometimes on this channel. All right, we are going to say about a 10 inch dowel, okay? And you won't need any fancy tools to do this. You can just pick up a hacksaw at the Dollar Tree for one buck and just saw it off and that will be great because the ends don't need to be perfect because you're not gonna see them. And just to give it more of a finished look, I'm just gonna take some antiquing wax and rub that onto my dowel just so it doesn't have that raw look. And make sure it's nice and snug and don't try to, like try to get where you're gonna poke it first so you don't pull it around and knock it. You don't want it to get loose. So you kinda wanna do this in one shot if you can. Now I always have this floral moss from the Dollar Tree on hand. It's perfect to cover up this ugly foam and it's great. So we'll just use that to cover up the floral foam. 
Then just take your floral foam sphere and shove that onto the top portion of the dowel. I got this little bag of tiny lemons at Michael's and they were running a 60% off sale. I always am looking for a good bargain. And then we're gonna just take some bamboo skewers and I believe I picked these also up at the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna cut these in half, maybe even thirds, honestly. And you can do this with a not good pair of scissors. I wouldn't pull out your nice fabric scissors for this, but we're just gonna cut them down a little bit. That's about three inches long. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little hot glue on these and just shove them into the lemon. Now we're gonna take our lemons and we're gonna shove them into that styrofoam ball evenly as possible. And I just used two bags of lemons for this. I had these left over from my peony wreath that I did a couple of episodes back. And I always am trying to keep my cast off greenery just for this and that and the other. You never know what you're gonna need it for. So instead of going out and purchasing actual lemon leaf or salal as it's called in the floral industry, I'm gonna use these rose leaves and we're gonna just shove that in between the lemons to kind of fill in. And you may wanna add a little hot glue to the bottoms of the leaves just to keep them secure in place. just love this little lemon topiary. It's like a ray of sunshine. It is so cute and I love my little lemon topiary. What do you think? So the first option is option number one, go find a two by six cutoff. You're gonna just keep it the regular width that it is and then cut it down to somewhere between eight and a half and nine inches. Basically the width of a piece of paper, maybe a little bit more and you'll get to see that in a second. And then all you're gonna do is just paint the whole thing out front and back white. I'm gonna be using my white chalk paint. Now I'm gonna go cut this down on my miter saw and that's a tutorial for another episode. I do lots of tutorials on how to use a miter saw so you'll have to check out some of those. But if you don't have a miter saw, you could definitely get away with just using a miter box. They're pretty inexpensive to get. I'll put a link for one on Amazon below and that will work for the other option that I'm gonna show you here which is, this was one of my fun favorite finds and I actually featured this on another Trash to Treasure episode. And all it is, is it's kind of a packing material. I found this on an aisle in Home Depot and it was gonna be discarded. So I asked really nicely if I could just have a few of these and take them home. Go in and say it's packing material, kind of explain it. You can see that there's like a little groove in it, right? If you ask really nicely, I think that they'd probably say, okay, cause I think they just these. Now this is a piece of scrap wood. I have a lot of scrap still from my DIY shelf build um, for this shelf behind me. And it's really awesome because this is like three quarter inches wide and it fits inside this little slot so perfectly. So I'm gonna cut this down to fit our printable, but then we're gonna just paint this top portion in a white chalk paint and get it prepared. And then we are gonna take the bottom portion and we are gonna paint this out in black chalk paint. Okay, so now here's our awesome printable. Isn't this so cute? I love it. You can print this out on your own computer, but for some reason I get such a more saturated image and a more beautiful image by running down to Staples. So I printed this out at Staples. It cost me about 59 cents on their self-service color printer and my husband's being silly over here and trying to distract me. <laughs> Anyways, if either of these methods don't work for you, you could shrink this down just a little bit, print it out and put it in a five by seven frame and call it a day. And that would look cute too. Now I've got a few different methods of how to go about this and you're just gonna need to pick the method that's gonna work best for you. So I just decided to put them both on the same eight and a half by 11 printable to just kind of simplify it. So you can see that this top one reads normally and all you're gonna do with this top portion is cut it off 
And then you're just gonna put some Mod Podge on the front of the block and place your paper on top of that using a rubber scraper or even a credit card to smooth it out. This is a little technique that I learned from my good friend Lisa Burningham over on her channel. Then after that is dry, you're going to put on a second layer of Mod Podge over the top of the paper and your paper will bubble up, but do not worry because once it dries, these bubbles should disappear. Once it's fully dry, then you are gonna want to sand off the edges to give it that rustic feel, and at the same time, make it look like it's painted on the wood and not just a Mod Podged piece of paper. This really helps to disguise that fact. The bottom one you'll notice is a reverse image. It's all backwards. You are going to take some Liquitex and do a moderate layer of this medium. You can pick this up at Michael's or I'll provide a link in the description box below. I've had this on hand and used it for several projects and it really doesn't take very much at all. Then you're going to carefully want to place your reversed printable face down on the Liquitex without wiggling it too much. So you're gonna want it to get it all nice and lined up before dropping it face down. Then you're gonna want to smooth it out with your hands, making sure that there is very good contact. Then you're just gonna let this completely dry for a few hours. Once you're sure that it is dry, get a soft washcloth and a bowl of water, and you will carefully and gently remove the paper by getting it wet. This part can be a little messy, so I would recommend putting a plastic bag or something underneath to protect your table. Once you've got the paper removed, the image should be on there in the proper direction. And once this fully dries, then you can scuff up those edges as well as the black painted base and give it that antique look that we are going for. Then you should be able to just take the sign portion and place it right into that ledge sitter base. All right, so we have our two versions of the little lemonade sign. Now this one is the image transfer technique and it definitely has like more of a rustic vibe to it. And then this one is our Mod Podge version, which is actually really good. I think if you're careful about Mod Podging, you can get a really good look. I like both versions for different reasons. So I'm just curious, which version would you do? Would you do the image transfer technique or the Mod Podge version and also which base would you do? Would you do just like the thick block of wood or do you like this ledge sitting one as well? So let me know in the comment section. I picked this wood canvas up at Walmart for $4.97. Sometimes they have it online, not always, but they typically do have it in store. So if you go in there, you can find it. It's meant to be like a wood canvas this way, but I always flipped it around to have this kind of like framed effect. And in that episode, which I'm going to link below, I paint the edges black and the center white, and that really gives us a nice backdrop to switch up. Now these are just attached with sticky putty. So we're gonna just peel these back and expose the backdrop for this. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be creating a tiny little wreath out of these lemon picks. They were originally $5, but with a 60% off, it made them $2 a piece. Now you could probably get away with just using two, but I'm gonna use all three so it's a little bit more full. And we are literally just going to bend these and shape them into a little tiny mini wreath and so you can see that we can put them all together and then all we're gonna do is take some green floral tape and strategically tape this into place so we've got a cute tiny little wreath our little lemon wreath created so easy I might add 
we are going to just take some ribbon. Now I'm using what I have on hand and I had some black and white buffalo check and I also have some black and white stripe. And I think I'm gonna go with a buffalo check just because we've already got a lot of stripes going on and so I kinda wanna break it up a little bit. We're gonna just take maybe like a foot long of it and then cut it off and then loop it through our little wreath. And then we're gonna just find the center and center up the wreath in our picture frame. And then on the back, use some duct tape and just tape it into place. So I love this look. I love that we've taken a little twist on what I've been doing with a sign and put a little mini wreath on it. Isn't this so cute? I just had so much fun designing this printable for you. And it's kind of going along with our lemon motif. Sweet Lemon Farm, Fresh Squeezed, so cute. I really think that this is striking and packs a punch. And I'm putting the link for this free printable in the description box below. Click on it, follow the instructions. It's not too hard. Then I take this to Staples. I love Staples. They are always good to me there. Plus, I just like their quality of print there. And what you do is you email this digital copy to staples at printme.com and you can print this out at walmart you can go to costco and print it out there costco i think is the cheapest it's i think it's 6.99 it's a little bit more at staples but i really like the color saturation and the paper that they put it on it's kind of like a regular paper but a little bit heavier weight and i love the kind of that matte sheen on this so that's this printable this is always a good diy because it's so easy to put together because all we do is we take out our frame backing and we put it in our frame and we call it a day and so easy. We're actually going to be turning this into an ottoman and I am so excited to do this because you know how many times do we have a tire sitting around our garage kicking around taking up space. If you don't already have a tire in your garage you could totally just ask around. Somebody will be happy to give you a free tire. So let's start, let's do it. Okay, so for the first part, we need to put a top and a bottom on this tire so it has some stability, so it can actually hold um, something in the middle of it without caving in. And so I picked up this piece of lumber at Home Depot for $4 and we should be able to get the top and bottom out of it. If you had a bigger tire, you might need a little bit pe bigger piece of wood, but you can use anything, any scrap wood you can get your hands on that's in a sheet form. And what we're going to need to do is make a circle. And so the easiest way to do that is to find center all right, so we're basically going to be using this entire piece of wood. We need to be very careful in our measurements because we don't really have a lot to spare. We need to find the center. X marks the spot. So then we're going to take a nail, put it on the center of that, tap it in just a little bit, flip knot that on there. And then we need to take some sort of um, writing utensil and we're gonna just tie it so it hits the edge here. And in theory, we should be able to do a circle. Okay, so I have a jigsaw here and we are gonna cut out the circle that we just traced. And honestly, best practice would be a much sturdier table than mine, but I do have it clamped down and we're gonna just be a little careful here. And we are just going to cut the circle out. It's a little humid outside, so I brought the party inside. We do this, we kind of go in and out. <laughs> it's just how we roll here. Anyways, so we've got our top and our bottom cut out of the wood, and now we need to adhere it. I have some leftover liquid nails, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna squeeze some of this liquid nails. This will just help everything kind of stay into place. We are gonna put this right on top. It's not gonna be perfect. It's cut with a jigsaw, and so there's just gonna be some waviness, and I thought that was okay. I'm gonna screw it down just for added measure. Now I flipped it over, and we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom side so that we will have a place to screw in some feet. I'm going to be 
wrapping rope around the entirety of the tire and the top, and then we'll put on some feet to make an ottoman. I got this rope, it's about 50 feet of rope, it's a half inch thick, and I really liked it, and it was really the best price that I could find, and it also had the look that I liked. And I got it at Michael's, it was regularly $16.99, and I used a 50% off coupon. You always have to use a 50% off or 40% off coupon. Michael's always has one. So I got this rope half off, making it $8.50 for 50 feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right in the center, and X marks the spot. We still have that from when we did our circle earlier. I'm gonna use a mixture of liquid nails and some hot glue. The hot glue kind of has more of an immediate contact and the liquid nails will be way more durable. I've actually seen some of these rope ottomans before and one of the problems with them is the rope unravels. And we're gonna prevent that because I've got a, a trick to show you. What we're gonna do is we can see that it's wound this way and we are gonna create a lashing. What you need to do is create a loop like this and then we are gonna line it up like so. And then we are going to wind in the opposite direction. And we're gonna do about three or four loops and make sure they're kind of snug. And then when you get those three or four loops, what you're gonna do is... I've just started and made like a tight coil and we've already got where X marks the spot. So I'm gonna start by doing some hot glue. And I'm just gonna be very generous there. And then I'm also gonna put some construction adhesive, cause that's gonna hold up better over time. Make sure that that's nice and center. And then all we're gonna do is just keep doing this all the way around. You just want to make sure you get it really nice and tight together. You don't want any gaps. This is going to be a little bit time consuming, so we're in it for the long haul. <laughs> We've made good progress, it's looking really good. And now I'm at a place where I need to transition from the wood to the tire. So the idea is to try to kind of make this transition as seamless and unnoticeable as possible. Okay, so what we're gonna be using for the feet of our ottoman these are actually just some finials that I got at Home Depot for $3.98 a piece. And I liked them because they were a little bit chunkier, they had a flat bottom, and I just thought that they would be the perfect height and everything about it worked, and the price was right. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stain them right now. So I'm just using the same Kona gel stain that I've used for my outdoor tuna can chandelier. And then I've used it on my bench. I have hardly made a dent on it, and so I'm gonna use it on this as well. And it's in like a nice dark chocolate, which will actually contrast next to the rope really well. Oh yeah, that looks so good, I love it. Patience is going to be a virtue in this project. Now it's time to attach our feet, and I've kind of marked where I wanted them. I've kind of evenly spaced them out. And now we're gonna pre-drill for the feet. And then we are just gonna twist them right into place. And again, these are just fence finials. Um, you could use actual furniture feet but I found them pretty pricey and these were smooth and perfect for what we're doing.
would be fun to do an outdoor street lamp on a smaller scale. We are gonna convert this into a solar powered lamp. There's a lot of options with this project, so let's get making over the lamp. The first thing that we're gonna do is we need to take this lamp apart. So I then just untwist the light socket until it's undone. And then I decide to just cut the wiring and pull it out the bottom, leaving just the base of the lamp. This includes the felt liner on the bottom of the lamp. There's already texture on the lamp, so I have a flat black matte spray paint. But I thought it might look cool to add a little more texture, so I also have a hammered black. So hopefully I make the right call here. I'm gonna start with the flat black because I figure it will be kind of like a primer. And if I'm not happy with it, then I'm gonna resort to this one. And these are both by Krylon. So we're just gonna start spray painting these. Now, if you're not lucky enough to find a column lamp base, go ahead and substitute it out. Aren't these already looking so much like lamp posts? Now, I ended up going with the matte black and it's actually not very matte in my opinion. I definitely would put it in the satin to semi, but I really did love the spray paint because it coated extremely well and I could turn it in different angles and the spray paint still came out. So I really like it. I didn't end up going with the hammered finish because I felt like the lamp had enough texture after all. So we are gonna really take it to the next level on the street lamp look. I scoured high and low, looked at my local home improvement stores, and finally ended up on Amazon where I found a two pack of a solar powered lamp post light right here. So they don't require any electrical wiring, which I love, but will still light up as long as they are charged by the sun, which in Florida here, we have a ton of that, so <laughs> we're okay. Now it comes with this square and my lamp's round. And so that looked to me a little funny. Fortunately, the bottom part does pop off. And so we can get rid of this. The problem is, is when I get rid of this, it makes it a little bit wobbly on here. So my thought is, is I will take a little hacksaw and try to cut this off because this part does fit nicely onto our existing dowel and it will be nice and snug. So I'm gonna try cutting that off, but if it doesn't work, we'll brainstorm some ideas. So I'm just gonna try, this is my $1 Dollar Tree hacksaw and this is just plastic. So I really think that we can cut through this. Success. <laughs> so we can push that back into here, line it up, push it in, okay, which is perfect. So now it will fit on this really well. Look how cute that is. I have some liquid nails, just a little bit left. I thought I had more of this. So hopefully there's a little bit in there just so it's a nice permanent fix. And that's it for the lamppost part other than charging up our lanterns outside in the sun. Now these could look really cute on a dining table or just somewhere in your outdoor decor. But I thought we could bring up the spring and summer vibe just a little bit more. So meet me outside. I'm gonna show you what I've got in mind and it's gonna even add just a little bit extra. Because of all the beautiful weather, I am getting the bug to kind of spruce up my pool area here. It really does need a makeover and I do want to do that pretty soon. So one of my ideas was, as I picked up this pot from Walmart for about five or six dollars, and then I got this one at Dollar Tree for one dollar. <laughs> and I spray painted this in the same black as I spray painted the lamp post at the same time. And I thought we could take some liquid nails and glue these together to make a kind of urn style one, except for at a huge discount because this is $5, this is a dollar. So we've got like six or $7 into this, whereas you could easily spend on an urn this size $30 without batting an eye. So this is a huge saving.
So I thought I'd start out by putting some sand into each one of the bottoms, not a whole lot, but just to add a little weight. It will also help with drainage. And then I'm gonna put some potting soil on top of that. It kind of looks like brown sugar. <laughs> Okay, so my plan is to put our lamps right in the center of this and to give it a little added support, I have these little dowels left over. It's just to help it from not toppling over. It's not really, I'm not gonna attach it to it. I'm just gonna stick it down in the center so the lamp doesn't wanna move around and topple. So for a little spring flare, I've got some greenery and we will, just kind of nestle those down. I actually might pull this out, plant them towards the edge, and then put that back down in there. But then it will give it that kind of spring and summer feel that we're going for. Now I picked this up at Walmart for, I think this is $2.50, and the violets were $1.12, so very affordable. We've kind of planted this around the edge and that looks so pretty. I love it. Now we're gonna take our lamp post and very carefully moving the vines out of the way and any flowers out of the way, place this into its spot. All right, I'm gonna water these. Even though I worked in a floral shop that had a nursery in it for a couple years during college, I tend to kill things in pots. So if you all would just take a second and say a prayer that I don't kill these. Amen. I'd appreciate it. So just for the solar powered lamp post, I ended up spending about $30 a piece. Adding in the potted urns and the flowers was approximately another $15 each. But for the impact that this gives, I think this is a crazy good steal. I am totally in love with these, slightly obsessed. found this basket at a thrift store. I believe it was for $6.99. It kind of has like a suitcase feel, but it's definitely a picnic basket. And I knew we could update it and give it new life. And the first thing that I did might seem scary to some of you, but I just decided I really wanted it to be white. So I went ahead and spray painted it very well. We did it the inside. We flipped it over and did the outside and we kind of just got it from every angle, making sure to let it thoroughly drive the, the nice thing about this is you kind of can spray it on a little bit thicker than normal because there's a lot of nooks and crannies and it kind of just sucked it right up. You don't want to go too crazy. I wanted to do something more than just spray paint it white. I wanted to give it a little character and all of our thrift flips kind of have a little bit of a French flair, if you will. But if that's not your style, I hope you still watch because there's a lot of good techniques and ideas that you can kind of implement your own look into. Stick with me, even if French isn't your thing. But I knew I wanted to have kind of like a picture of something yummy that had a French flair. So I designed this image for you and I will be giving you the free printable in the description box below. So look for the link for that. This image is gonna go on this oval wood round that I got from the Dollar Tree back when it was still a dollar and <laughs> not a dollar 25. It's not painful at all. I, I don't keep talking about the fact that they went up. <laughs> Just kidding. But we needed to prep the surface for what we are gonna be doing because there's a little bit of a twist to this printable. So the first thing I did was fill in those little holes with putty and then I let that dry. And then of course, after that was dry, I sanded it down, prepping it for paint. 
We are gonna paint that out in two coats of white chalk paint and, and prep the surface for it. Then we are gonna print out our image onto what's called water slide paper. I've used water slide paper in the past and I just absolutely love this technique. I love it over a couple of other techniques. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute because I, I do try one of these different techniques and it, it didn't go so well, so you'll see. Now that we've got our image printed out on this special water slide paper, this is the most important step for this whole process. You're gonna spray three coats of this triple thick crystal clear glaze by Krylon. This is the one that I recommend. You just need some kind of like acrylic based clear glaze. It dries pretty fast, especially in nice weather. And so every 15 minutes you can put on a coat and then when it's dry, we're gonna cut out that oval shape and then we're gonna submerge it in water. And this is where the whole water slide feature comes into play. Once we've submerged it underwater for about 30 seconds, it might, you know, give or take, when you can start to feel it lift off of the backing, we are gonna set it right on top of our painted oval and we're gonna line it up how we want it and then we're gonna slowly pull out the backing from underneath. Now, the water kind of activates like a wallpaper kind of glue paste and so that's gonna help it stick and then you kind of just press out all of the air bubbles and then you let it fully dry. Now, you could, because it already has the polyacrylic on it, you don't need to seal it again, but I always do because I kind of wanted it to have more of a matted finish and the triple thick glaze is definitely a high gloss look. And so once that is fully dry, I did one coat this time around of that matte sealer and we sprayed that on. Now while that's drying, we are going to add a little bit more detail to our basket. We kind of spray painted over the brass little buttons and everything. So I just went back in with some gold leaf rub and buff and just kind of added those little gold accents back onto our basket just to give it a little bit more personality and bring some of that character back. And then with our own oval shape dry, I, I centered it on our the front of our basket and used some E6000 to adhere our little sign to our cute picnic basket. And that's it. And it is a super cute picnic basket that you could take. I, I really love, really love how this turned out. I really love that extra added element of the oval round with like the really cute French pastry on it. Again, I'll link that free printable for you in the description box below. And I hope you recreate this look and if you do, send it to me over on Instagram. I had this frame that I picked up on like the Hobby Lobby like clearance shelf. So it's not technically a thrift, but it was like an outcast at Ho Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so, and it's just a beautiful wood frame that's just been sitting around waiting for the right project. Then I went and hit up my scrap pile to see what I could find. So I'm gonna just check my scrap pile here to see if there's anything. I think I have something, yeah, like this piece right here that might fit in this frame. Let's just see how this fits. Ooh, that is super close. Okay, so I just need to cut off a little tiny bit, but it's the right thickness and everything, and all we need to do is trim just a touch. Then I cut down the piece of scrap wood. I didn't have to cut off much. It was just a couple quick cuts to make it fit. And then I got to painting the scrap wood in two coats of white chalk paint. And then I attempted to do the image transfer on that one. And, well, I actually kind of did them like at the same time. So I didn't really know that it wasn't gonna go well, but like, it's just that whole same process of the image transfer of like the polyacrylic, putting it face down, using the water to kind of, you know, remove the paper and then it looked so bad. I was like, you know what? The picnic basket looked kind of bad. It wasn't like my favorite, but it was like passable. This to me was just a total fail. So at this point I'm like, I am so over the image transfer. I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. So then I flipped the board over and proceeded to start again. And I did two coats of white chalk paint. So can you guess what I'm gonna go back to? <laughs> that original water slide paper. Now, the reason I didn't really do the water slide paper for that last picnic basket and 
initially for the tray was because the sheets only come in like an eight and a half by 11 and there would have been seams and I just didn't know how it worked. So after the failure of the picnic basket and the epic failure of what I'm tempting to be like a little serving tray here with the French floral, I'm like, you know what? I'd rather see a little seam than have these results. So what I did is I split the image down the middle in two and I printed out two sheets of this water slide paper. It's pretty affordable too. A lot more affordable than having these images printed out at Staples, I can tell you that much for sure. So then I repeated that same process of using the triple thick crystal clear glaze, three coats. I I think I even did four coats on this because it was gonna be a serving tray and I just wanted to be extra sure. With that dry, I made sure the cuts were super straight with my Cricut like little paper cutter. We just repeated that same water slide method of submerging the paper into the water, waiting about 30 seconds. Because it was a little bit bigger, it might be up to a minute. And this is where kind of like the rubber meets the road. If you did it properly, it won't disintegrate. If you don't do that crystal clear coats, then like the paper kind of disintegrates into the water and it's just a total mess. So make sure you do that step. But we didn't have that problem this time around. We submerged our paper, laid it out where we wanted and like carefully removed the under backing. And then we did the second piece, making sure to match up the seams as close as possible so that it was almost like non-existent. And then pulled that sheet out. And then I was like, yes, I don't even care that there's a seam. This is looking good so far. And then I smoothed it all out, got rid of the air bubbles and let that dry really well for like an hour or two, just to make sure that like all the water is gone and dissolved. Then I knew that I'm gonna be attempting to use this for a serving tray. So I did like two or three coats of a matte clear finish, um, a non-yellowing, this Watco brand that I really love and I, made sure that it was really sealed well. And also it was kind of dual purpose because I was trying to hide as much of that seam as possible. But overall, I was like doing a happy dance at this point going, woohoo, this is looking good. <laughs> and so then all we needed to do was put it into that frame that we got from Hobby Lobby and, and around the edges, I just took my finish nailer and nailed that down into place because we did not want it going anywhere. You don't want to be holding a serving tray and have the bottom drop out. So it needed to be secure. Now you could stop at this point and just turn it into a beautiful piece of art. As you see here, I, I think this could be a really good technique for art. Or you could continue on like I did and I used some of these really cool like iron handles that I love to get from Hobby Lobby in a black and I just screwed those in on either side and then we have this beautiful serving tray and, and I have to tell you this might be my favorite thrift flip of this episode it's so cute and summery and fresh you could use it indoors you could use it outdoors I just love it I think it's beautiful now I might have a lot of you asking well why don't you just mod podge it on well I have not had great uh, success mod podging things. I think ultimately over time it bubbles up. You know, I just, I am just a huge fan of this water slide paper because it gets, it suctions right down and, and really has such a beautiful finished look. I love it. We are going to be customizing some outdoor pavers. Now these pavers were not expensive at all. They're like $1.58 at the home improvement store a piece. So I thought it would be really fun to kind of do like a checkerboard. I must have that in my mind for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I kind of like a checkerboard pattern on this. And so what I did is I went into Cricut Design Studio and found a tile pattern in their image section that I really like. They have several several to choose from and I really kind of liked the look of this one that I selected and then of course I sized it to where I needed and I put it on a square and and sliced it and removed it. it working in design space is super easy it's not difficult at all but if you're not familiar with it I have a video on how to do that so once we picked out our design and it was ready to cut we just sent it over to the Explore Air 3 again cut it on that and then I went about weeding it. So I did cut this out on permanent vinyl and it's gonna be a little bit 
tricky to get it to stick but it does stick it you just have to help it a little bit and <laughs> massage it into the paver a little bit it's not meant to be a permanent fix we are using this as a stencil then i decided to get my off-white chalk paint and just chalk paint that onto the the tile i was pretty generous and i didn't do a clear coat to seal it because honestly the rough edges you'll see in a second work well in this circumstance and i just did a pretty good one coat of it and let that dry and then i peeled back the stencil which is really easy to do because it didn't really want to stick to our cement piece in the first place it's all good <laughs> but when i peeled it back it looked really pretty and then i took it out to the yard and i did a couple of matte clear coats on it just to give it some layer of protection but i think this looks really cute i haven't decided exactly where i'm going to be putting these at the moment but i think it would be a really cute porch like you could get a few more of them and do this on like a little porch if you need it or do a little pathway of it um, but I think these turned out really cute and even though the edges are a little bit rough I think it kind of gives it kind of like that ecot look and I just am really happy with how it turned out I found these metal planters at a thrift store oh about a year ago and I've just been hanging on to them for the right project I think today is the day they were looking a little bit dirty so originally what i did is i sprayed them down with wd-40 and like really wiped them down and they were looking really good but then i got looking close and noticed that somebody had previously spray painted one out of the three and it was looking a little worse for wear <laughs> hobby <laughs> thanks honey he still makes me giggle <laughs> all right this one random one was spray painted and it was subtle but it just didn't look very good and so therefore it doesn't match these other ones that were bronze and i can't leave it like that so i went in and scrubbed off the wd-40 with some soap and water and we're going to let it dry in the sun and then we're going to spray paint them all black so that they match. I could have left it because it's really subtle but it would have bothered me. Okay so with our newly cleaned up brackets ready to go I just did two coats of matte black spray paint easy peasy and left that to dry but we needed a place to put these brackets so what I ended up doing is taking a piece kind of like a long skinny piece of wood from my scrap pile and then I stained it out in the same briar smoke gel stain that we used on the chest table to kind of coordinate everything together and we left that to dry now while that was all drying I went into Cricut design studio and I found a kind of a skinnier damask pattern that I really liked and I made two of them super easy it was like ready to go I just went into their image library and found it and then sized it out to where we wanted it and then hit cut I mean it was really really simple process and then I of course cut it out on matteless black permanent vinyl because we are going to be leaving the vinyl decal on the wood and it's going to be outdoors. I went ahead and weeded that all out and then we put on our transfer tape. Don't use the strong grip. It's a little bit much even for the permanent vinyl. Just stick with the regular transfer tape in this case. The stains dry, the paint dry, we are ready to assemble and what I did is I kind of laid it all out on this piece of wood and made sure that everything was evenly spaced. Then I took some screws that I kind of spray painted black to match and screwed these down into the wood into their spots. Then we had these like little openings and I knew that that was going to happen and then that's where we applied our damask pattern and I kind of did it in mirror image so like one was one direction one was the other direction and I thought that looked really really neat and we just simply rubbed it into place removed the transfer tape and it was easy 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 as far as active time this took like hardly any time to put together it was 
very simple using some scrap wood that I had on hand, some inexpensive brackets that I found at a thrift store. This turned into a really cute little planter display that I can put outside in, on my front porch in that little awkward skinny spot. And honestly, it could go indoors or outdoors, but it's super cute. I love it with the little pots and planters in it. And I hope that it opens up your mind and gets your wheel spinning of how you could maybe take some unrelated things together and create a cute little decorative piece. I thought it would be really cool to do like a part two of this DIY. I removed our original chess table top that we made in that last episode and kind of centered it on top of the round. And it really kind of came to the edges of this tabletop round. And I traced it all around just so I knew that it was perfectly centered and nothing was gonna be off kilter. And then I decided, well, how are we gonna make this sit? Cause I'm not just gonna put the tabletop round on it. That would feel to me like it could easily be bumped off and, and not just be a quality piece. So my idea was to kind of wrap it in wood so that it was very sturdily, sturdily, is that a word? <laughs> it was on there good. Either way, I took some little strips of wood that I had cut off and they, I think they were about three quarter inch by one and a half inch. They were left over from another project and I kind of traced where I wanted them to be all the way around. And then I took them to my miter saw. I love my new miter saw. It's awesome. Uh, cut so smooth. It's nice. <laughs> and then I m proceeded to make those cuts. Now they were a little bit more than a 45 degree angle. You can probably get away with a 45 degree angle having done it now, but it was a little bit more than a 45 degree angle. So I just kind of pulled it out a little bit, lined it up with a line and made the cuts. <laughs> Probably not the best way to do it, but it worked for me. And then once I had made all four pieces, so all four sides of that underneath table, then I took some wood glue and some finish nails and nailed that to the underside of the table, leaving the chest table in place so that it, I knew that it would fit on there nice and snug. You want to be able to move it out, but you want it to be kind of nice and snug on that so it's not going anywhere and not being bumped around easily. If you weren't doing this portion, I would just refer you back to the original video where we made the chest table and all we did is took like a big wood round that I got at the craft store, the home improvement store, and I wood glued and attached that to the underside and you could forego that like wrap section. It's really easy. So it's kind of the same concept as before, just sands the chest table. So go back and watch that episode and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So with our tabletop now sturdy and ready to go, I proceeded to stain the entire thing in a briar smoke gel stain, which is kind of like a, a warm gray tone. And I really love gel stain because it's got such good coverage. I tend to like, um, like a little bit more opaque stain and a little less translucent, not all the time, but generally speaking, I do tend to go with a gel stain because I, I just like it. <laughs> I don't know. And then I let the gel stain fully dry, but before we could leave it out, we needed to seal it. Now you could go with a, like a poly acrylic, but I really feel like the better way to go here was to use this Thompson's water sealer. I do have to forewarn you, it does take a little while to dry and maybe that's just because I live in Florida and it's super humid and the humidity makes it dry slower. And they do say one coat is sufficient, um, so, I don't know about that. I did go back in and touch up a few spots, but I didn't want to overdo it. But you put on a waterproofing seal and then let that dry. And if you live in a drier climate, maybe it will dry faster for you. Do not skip that step in my opinion, because if you don't seal it very well, this type of like butcher block type of table is not going to hold up and stand the test of the weather elements. If you don't do that step, it could break apart over time. So with a tabletop done, I'm gonna ask you to hang on just a second with me before we do the reveal because there are some other working elements and we're gonna kind of cover them all before we do that reveal. I started out with a 24 by 24 inch piece of plywood that I got from the hardware store. That way we did not need to do any cuts 
on that. But I wanted to trim it out with something a little bit nicer, beef it up, make it look a little bit more substantial. So then I got to break in my new miter saw and cut some miter edges on our trim, which was a simply a one by two. And we cut those all out. Doing a miter cut is so super easy, it's not difficult. It's a 45 degree angle cut all the way around. So we need to make four more just like this. So what I do is on the inside, I'm gonna write a little P. We know this is our pattern and we're gonna use it to make all of our marks. Line it up and then there we go. We'll make that cut. I had this elaborate plan to do like an addition behind the pool and kind of make a pool house that was going to be my workshop, but my HOA is mean <laughs> and they said no. <laughs> Anyways, until that, to try to prevent this from rusting, since I don't have an indoor workshop or a place that I can do this, this is what I'm gonna do. So until I get a better solution, we are gonna just cover it up and hope for the best because that's all I can do for now. Did, which is kind of different and you might be wondering why I'm doing this is I took a wood round that was a 15 inch round and I made sure I knew where center is drew a circle where that center is making sure it's where we want it and then I put some wood glue on that wood round and attached it to the underside of our table and then I shot some finish nails into that and you'll see why this is all important in a second but with that all assembled and dried I went about staining it. Now I originally started with a, like a grayish one and immediately I knew that it wasn't the right color of gray. So I went to my trusty Briar Smoke gel stain that I've used a lot on my, my channel. There's a couple of gel stains that I really like and I really do like gel stain because it has such good coverage and it's a little bit um, more saturated and shows a little bit less of the grain. I wish I'd been a little bit more careful about this piece of plywood that I picked out because it did end up having one of those fisheye pieces in it, which I end up covering up a little bit, but that kind of bothers me a little bit, but we're gonna go with it and it, you probably won't notice it that much in the end. The next morning after it had dried, I measured out our 20 by 20 inch chess board and I taped that off with blue painter's tape on the edges. And then I kind of used a square edge to really get those first couple of rows lined out. And then all it is is simply making that checkerboard pattern all the way until you use up all 32 of those squares. Boys keep on pouring down when it's gray outside. Now with that on, I decided to seal all the edges so that the paint wouldn't bleed. I used a clear varnish sealer that dries really quickly. And once that was dry, I did two coats of a black chalk paint that I added a little brown into. Because of the other colors and tones that I had, I really wanted to warm up that black just a touch. And that's what we did as I kind of mixed that all together and did two coats of that. When it's cold and don't they miss the leaves? they left behind. Once it was dry, I peeled off all of those extra little squares and it revealed our chest board. Well, I felt like it was a little bit unfinished around the edge, so I took some tape and taped off a quarter inch or a very thin line all the way around and added two coats around the outer edge to just kind of 
finish it off and make it feel more like a game board and let that dry and then I peeled off all of that tape. Then I wanted to make sure it was waterproof for days like today that we wouldn't go through all this work and effort and then it looked really bad in a couple of months. So I went ahead and took some Thompson's waterproofing sealer and did two coats of that. Now I will tell you it did take a full 24 hours to dry fully and not be tacky. So just know that going into it that it does take a little bit of time to dry. With it dry, we are going to place our game board on this beautiful pot that I found. I think it was at Home Depot. It was either Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't recall. But it was a beautiful pot and I thought that would make a really beautiful table and we can set that on it. What's nice about it is you can lift it up and you can put all of your game pieces inside this urn when you're not using them and then put the top back on so they're safe and out of the elements and then you can pull them out when you are ready to play around. So I really liked that. Even though I didn't play, I enlisted the help of my husband to come set up the game board and show me how to do that because guilty, I don't know how to do that. And so that was really nice of him to come help me out. I think this will be a really fun activity for my husband and sons to do this summer or year round here. Um, and then also maybe I need to take it up and learn how to play it after all. <laughs> Anyways, as far as aesthetically, which is what I care about, <laughs> I think it turned out really, really cute. I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to be a fun activity for my family, but it really looks cool. We are going to upgrade some bistro chairs. Now I went back and forth and hemmed and hawed for weeks over what kind of chairs to do until I went into Hobby Lobby recently and saw these really cute chairs with a cool shape. Now the colors were a little wild for like what I've got going on on my patio. One was a bright yellow and one was a red. That wasn't going to work for me. But the shape and the size and all of that really worked and I liked it. The price was pretty good as well at $48.99. So I picked up two and brought them home. And the first thing we did is give them a good spray painting on the bottom, on the top, in a flat black spray paint. And and you're gonna have to flip it over, put it in a lot of different angles and make sure that the, the whole thing is covered. I ended up using three cans of spray paint for the two chairs, so about a can and a half per chair to get it really well covered. And then with it fully dry, I put on the little caps back on the feet of the chair and it was looking good. Now. You could leave it like that, but it was a wire seat and it didn't feel like it would be like uber comfortable. And I wasn't sure about doing a cushion on that because I felt like it would like push down through the graded thing. And I thought it would be really cool to give it a wood seat that matched our wood top that we just created. And it just so happened that the wood rounds that they sell at Hobby Lobby that I don't know the exact size. I think it's 16 to 18 inches. I sat them down in the store while I was buying them and realized that that was a good fit. So I just took those wood rounds and stained them in that same Briar Smoke gel stain on the front and the back and let that fully dry. And then of course we cannot skip the ceiling of these chairs as well. Um, so what I did is I sealed one side, let that dry, and then I flipped it over and sealed the other side and so that it was fully protected top and bottom. And then I was like, how are we gonna attach this? We've got like a metal kind of interesting seat and this wood, how are we gonna attach them? And then I'm like, what about zip ties? I'm like, that could work. And so what I did, because the arms were kind of an interesting shape, it wasn't really fitting on my table well. So what I did is sat that wood right on top of where it needed to be. And then I laid on the ground and then I kind of traced out where I wanted to attach that on the underside. And once I got that all traced out, I took it to my little work table and I stapled on about six zip ties that were already black and used a couple of them on each one. And then I put it back where it was supposed to go, 
kind of threaded through the zip tie so it would wrap around all of those little spots that I got. And then I put the zip tie through the little device and pull it really tight. And then it, it's a nice snug fit and it worked out really great. Then you cut off the excess and you would never know that these seats are attached with zip ties. It's going to be great. It's going to work out just fine for our purposes. And if we ever wanted to remove the wood for whatever reason down the road, that would be easy as well. So we're done with the chairs and you're probably like, show it to me, show it to me. But I'm gonna ask you to hang with me just a second longer because I have one more project that's gonna go in that little vignette and I wanna reveal it all at one time. So no reveal yet, just yet. Hang on, <laughs> I promise it's coming and I hope you like it because I really do. This next DIY is a really quick one, I promise. All I did is I found this urn and it kind of mimicked the base of our table and it kind of had some similar coloring. And I'm like, I really wanna tie this all together. It was pretty as is. I'm gonna just say that up front. So when I do what I do, you'll understand why I'm doing it. I could have left it alone, but I wanted to add in that black and really tie that whole look together. So what I did is I kind of taped it off um, protecting those little decorative arms and like around the base. And then I mixed some black chalk paint with some baking soda because I really wanted it to have kind of like a, a little bit more rough texture. And I mixed that all together. And then I proceeded to like stipple it onto the pot so it would kind of increase that texture and not have any brush strokes, but have like a, a stippled effect, which I really liked in this case. Then I took a small paintbrush and gotten all the little nooks and crannies and finished that out. And then of course, course I did not want to forget the inside because I didn't know how much of that would be exposed when we planted up our pot and so I painted that out as well and let that fully dry and that's it it was a really quick makeover then I just threw some stones into the bottom of it to help with some of that drainage I got this really pretty kind of orangey colored plant I'm not even sure exactly what it's called at um, Walmart for very inexpensive I just thought it was like a nice little pop of color it's kind of matches with the shirt that I'm wearing actually and that was it for that project and now it's time for the reveal that I promised you so the first thing I did is I got this area rug at Hobby Lobby it was round it was a really good size it kind of had some natural elements but with the black and the white that I already have going on with my color scheme and I rolled that out where we are going to be putting the table then I took our pot base and I don't think I mentioned this in the first one because it was in that original episode but it was literally just a big planter that I believe I picked up from Lowe's and it makes a beautiful base for a table in my opinion a little bistro set of course our little chess pieces are already inside and then I placed our chess table on top and then I placed our round table on top of the chess table kind of making sure it was nice and snug and fit and then all of a sudden it looks like a really cute bistro set with that on and then I added the chairs and then of course I added some little cabana stripe pillows that kind of matches like the overall look of the patio. Now, if you haven't seen like my whole patio makeover, I'll link that below in the description box because it, I really love my patio. It's really fun. I know I use it sometimes to like build stuff, but I do try to keep it clean <laughs> because I really love my patio. And then of course I placed our beautiful flowers and that's it. And what do you think of this makeover? I absolutely love it and I think all in all I'm in this under $200 for sure under $200 with everything and that's including the chest table part and for how cute this is I really feel like that's a really good price I priced out a lot of these little bistro sets that and the, I think, I feel like most of them are over $300. So I feel like this is a really unique, fun look and a good deal as well. <laughs> and it's functional. And if we wanted to put something more than just chess pieces in the side of this little base urn, it would work out great. It's great additional storage for your patio. I'm always looking for good storage ideas. And I just love how this turned out. I found a beautiful, chandelier that was $529 and I really loved it 
but I wanted to see if I can do it for a lot less. I'm gonna be using some really interesting items. I think you might even actually question my sanity a little bit when I, I pull out some of the items, but that's what you gotta do is you gotta get creative. You gotta think outside of the box, but I promise you that they're gonna work and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you three interesting things that I'm using. The first is I'm gonna be using some cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree. I think they're gonna really work for a part of our project. And then I'm using three of these six foot dog tie out cables. So like a dog chain from the Dollar Tree again. And then finally, and this is a little bit odd, I am using eight tuna cans, like empty tuna cans. So we've had a lot of tuna sandwiches recently. Okay, so we're gonna start by building the frame of the chandelier first. And I picked up three of these 36 inch long, one and a half by one and a half inch poplar pieces of lumber from Home Depot. We are gonna keep two of them the original length and then we are gonna take the third one and cut it directly in half. We're gonna just go ahead and mark that and make that cut now. So a couple quick safety tips. Normally I have some clear protective eyewear for my saw. I couldn't find them, so we're gonna make do with my sunglasses, but that's just to prevent any sawdust from getting in your eyes. In between each use, I always unplug it because I have little people around and I just don't want them accidentally, you know, turning it on like that and hurting themselves even if I'm gonna only be away from it for just a second. We're gonna be building the frame for the chandelier. I didn't want anything exposed like in the way of nails or anything on the end. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna insert dowels inside the joint to keep it all nice and put together. We're gonna take the one of the long ones and we are going to Take a nail and put it in about the center. Tap it into place, make sure it's nice and level. And then you take some wire clippers and you clip off the head of the nail so then it's kind of sharp. And then we're gonna line it up on this table. And then we take our hammer and tap it into place. And what that's gonna do is make a mark where your starting hole should be. And then we can just take this nail and pull it out. So now you've got a, a starting point for each joint. Drill nice and straight. And then we do the same thing to this. So roughly this is gonna work. We're probably gonna need to do a little sanding around the joints, but that's okay. Before we glue this together and finalize it, then you're just gonna add some wood glue in the holes and if a little bit gets through, that's okay because then it will help strengthen that joint. For a much tighter joint, I highly recommend using a clamp. So I've let my frame dry overnight, so I'm gonna take off the clamp now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand the frame because we want a nice um, smooth surface. Using a sander makes it so much faster. <laughs> So I decided to move the party inside um, because I didn't know how the humidity and heat would work with the stains. I'm doing it in our guest bathroom because this is an area that is not getting used right now and then I can also turn on the fans for circulation and all of that. I'm gonna put on some gloves to protect my fancy manicure that I still don't have. <laughs> no, I'm just doing this because it's gonna get messy and I don't want to have a stain all over my hands. And then I've got a cast off sock that its partner probably got eaten by my dryer, like so many socks do. Just gonna dunk my hand in the stain and I'm just using a gel stain because I thought it would work a little bit better and give us a nice thick coat. And that is going on very dark, which is kind of good because that's kind of what I wanted. The next step in the process is creating the iron strapping that was on the wood frame. And you're gonna need protective gloves for this step because you're gonna be exposed to some sharp edges and it's really important to protect your hands so you don't get cuts. They're not very expensive at all and definitely worth it. Then you're gonna take your tin snips and cut off the lip of the cookie sheet, leaving just the bottom part. Then you're gonna take that part and cut two and a half inch strips. Then you are ready to spray paint, which we will just 
spray paint all of the tuna cans. Anything that's going to be metal, we're going to use the leftover spray paint from my project last week and spray everything a nice flat iron looking black. So I've let everything dry for several hours and hopefully it is all dry enough to do my next step. We're going to start with the iron, the iron. <laughs> the pretend iron um, strapping that was made from cookie sheets and we've sprayed it in that um, outdoor flashing that black is I'm going to start on the inside so the rough side is right underneath the tuna can <laughs> tuna can oh my goodness and so we're gonna just fold it around and get it on there and it should just bend really nicely and then we're gonna put a little pressure and pull it up and bend it all the way around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little mark here and then I'm gonna grab my tin snips that I left inside. So I'm gonna go grab those and I'm gonna take this off. We are gonna trim it to fit. To kind of keep everything in place, I'm gonna take my tuna can and I've kind of punched a little hole in this, set this on top. So I'm gonna drill pilot. So that is set. Then I'm going to switch my tip to a traditional tip. I'm just using drywall screws. I had them on hand. You could probably use whatever you want. And then we are going to screw this right into place. Look at that. So that is on there good. That will help the fake iron strap to stay in place good. And we'll do that all the way along. So you can see right here, I have a little bit of an issue and I did know that this was gonna happen. And what it is, is it's just where this seam is meeting up. And I've got some, you know, E6000 on there, but it doesn't wanna stay down because it wants to bend out. So my solution for this, and it's also kind of an aesthetic thing as well, on the um, original, there's some nail heads. And I just am going to, I took these thumbtacks and I sprayed them the same color. So I press those in and not only does that hold it into place, but it adds kind of an aesthetic as well. So, and anywhere that I'm scratching on this ironwork, I'm planning on going back in and touching up. Next, I drill pilot holes into the wooden round in a square shape for the hooks that will hold the chain supports. Then I place another thumbtack in the center for an added decorative touch. So on the edges, I've come in two and a half by three quarters. We're gonna pre-drill the screws for the hooks where we're gonna attach our cables. All right, so I'm getting ready to hang my light fixture and I had my husband come out earlier and help me mark where we were gonna need to put it because it was kind of a two person job because we had to kind of center it in between the two light fixtures, you can get and see. Um, and apparently he did not want me to miss where he marked. So I need to determine whether or not there's a stud up there. So I'm gonna use a stud finder. That would be most ideal because obviously that would be the most secure. Um, if not, I do have a toggle that I can put into the drywall which would support up to 50 pounds worth of weight, which should be more than plenty because my light fixture is nowhere near that. Um, so let's go see if there's a stud. There's a stud in my house. Let's see if there's a stud up there. No stud. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be using the toggle. So I wanted to show you before I hung it that I attached the cables to the hooks right here and over here. And so on all corners, and then I connected it right there as well.
right, my project is done. It's hung. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I feel like it's a really good dupe and a really good knockoff of the Valor design. My version came in at around $60. There is a way to do it for about half the cost and that would include switching out the candles for some from the Dollar Tree. This is the Dollar Tree version and this is my version. Now, the reason I went with these candles is because the Dollar Tree one, you would have to manually turn on each and every time you use it. You have to get up and, and switch that out. My version, you actually can turn on with a remote and off with a remote, so it's really cool. They're a little bit beefier. I'm really glad I spent the extra money, but if you're looking for a little bit more budget-friendly solution, switch out for the Dollar Tree candles. I came up with an idea that I'm really excited about and I'm gonna be working with a medium that I have never worked with before. We're gonna be using this lawn bag to create a cement planter. I've never worked with cement in my life, so this could get a little dicey, <laughs> we'll see. I've had this kind of bucket floating around outside for a while, if it gets totally trashed in this process. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. I've had to actually duct tape it in a couple of spots because there was cracks and I didn't want concrete to leak through and I, so I used some Gorilla Tape. And then of course we sewed down this bag so that there's only like a couple of inches all the way around. We do not want like a 100 pound planter. That just would not work. <laughs> and so hopefully we've got it the good size now. I have no idea how this is gonna go, but I have high hopes. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this bucket and we're gonna put it on the ground below this bag. I better put some cardboard down. I'm also gonna put on gloves because just touching this cement mixture, my fingers are a little irritated, so we don't want that. So I'm gonna put gloves on and we're gonna crack open the sand mix. <gasps> I'm really hoping this turns out. And I just got this cheap shovel at Dollar Tree because I figure I could toss it when I'm done. And I've got water and we're just supposed to mix until it kind of looks like oatmeal apparently. And we're gonna mix it. And I can already tell this is not gonna be nearly enough. I think I need a whole lot more. I feel like this is like a grown up version of making mud pies. <laughs> Adult mud pies. <laughs> mix, mix, mix. This is a good workout. <laughs> okay, that's about as close to oatmeal as I think we can get. I don't think that I fully explained what look I'm going for. I saw this inspiration photo and I was like, that is really cool looking. I want to try to get that look, but there was no instructions. So I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. Now, ideally I'd probably just get like a rice bag or a burlap sack and do this planter. But this is what we're working with, a mystery challenge. I got my cooking spray here and we are gonna spray the inside of the bag and the outside of this. I hope that helps. We'll just kind of rub it together. And then we're also going to spray down this. I'm hoping this helps kind of release it when we're done. I'm going to put about two inches on the bottom. <laughs> and I hope this is, again, the right consistency. Mud pies. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I really hope it does. Now we're gonna set this in. We're gonna try to center this. Just kinda trying to evenly distribute this. This might be my first epic fail. I don't know. There's those pesky strings. They're cheering me on. So I'm going to sacrifice this thing to the cause here because I feel like it might make our lives a little bit easier. With one last stitch effort, 
I'm gonna finish off the bag. And one of the things on that was that there was a decorative rope and it was cinched in like a bag would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my big rope here and tie it off and see if that helps hold it up a little bit and I can, if I can shape it around that or not. I believe this will be the front. We will cinch the rope. Oh, I just got it all over my face. Now that we've got that rope there, I'm hoping that we can kind of shape it like the bag that we're trying to get. I'm just kind of massaging it up. All right, at this point, I'm not feeling very confident to be honest with you, but we're just gonna let it dry and hope for a small miracle that it turns out and it looks amazing. <laughs> I've let this sit for like 36 hours and we are going to disassemble and see what it looks like. I don't have high hopes. <laughs> we'll see though. I am so surprised. It actually turned out and I think it's really, really cute. I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> so we've got a couple of loose fibers here that I've got some scissors and we're gonna try to trim those off. And then we're gonna let it cure a little bit longer and then we'll get a fresh rope, tie it around and plant it up with some cute flowers that I'm probably gonna kill, but we're gonna try really hard to keep alive this time. <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised. What comes to mind for me when I think of a fish, I think of two things. I think of sushi and I think of fishing. And when I think of fishing, I think of my cousin, Alec. Alec was seriously the most amazing little guy you've ever met in your life. And he was diagnosed with cancer many years ago and he fought really, really hard. Honestly, he was seriously such an amazing kid because as much pain as he was in, he never complained once. He never asked, why me? He literally was probably too perfect for this life because he aced it at only 12 years old and, and Alec loved to fish. And his make-a-wish was even going fishing in Alaska, which he did shortly before he passed away. So my idea for this fish is to make a garden stepping stone in his honor and then send it to my aunt for Mother's Day, which is not too far away. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you outside and we're gonna make this out of concrete, some more of that concrete. So I start out by mixing up a little bit more concrete. For our form, I decided to use a planter liner I picked up in a three pack at Dollar Tree. I sprayed it with some cooking spray again and I pour in a little bit of our concrete. Then I take a cooling cookie rack from the Dollar Tree and I take some tin snips and I cut it down to fit inside our form. This just adds a little bit more stability to the stepping stone. Now, I don't know if it's really necessary, but I thought it couldn't hurt. Then I poured the rest of our concrete on top and smoothed it out. And my plan for the fish is to do an impression with it. And for that to work, we need it to be a little bit more firm, but still a little wet. I let it set up for like two hours. Then I take our fish and push it to the bottom third of our stone and let that set up for 24 hours. Then I remove it from our container. To make it easier to stencil, I first spray it with a clear coat that, and that will just help me to be able to put down my stencil and, and not allow for any of the flaking of the cement. And I took a stencil that I made on my Cricut machine and then I also mixed up some black outdoor paint with a little bit of gray paint to kind of soften it just a little bit. And then I fill in our stencil. I decide after the fact to 
also add an additional three fish at the bottom. And then when we're done painting it, I add an additional clear coat. Now when I saw this little fisher guy, it immediately reminded me of Alex Silhouette. And this is definitely my favorite project from this episode because it means so much to me. And I know it will mean a lot to my Aunt Teresa too. Alec may have passed to the other side, but he will never be forgotten here on earth by those who loved him. So I really love this project and hope that you found inspiration in it. What we've got to do here today and over the next few days is a little bit daunting, a little bit overwhelming. I'm not quite sure where to begin because it is such a disaster. My neighbors have been really cool. I know that they are probably going to be more excited than even me, which is hard to believe that we get this makeover done. Nobody's reported me to the HOA, which is pretty much a miracle. <laughs> all right, so as I'm recording all of these before pictures for you. I'm realizing just how embarrassing this is. Like super, super dirty, super grody. I'm going to build like an outdoor armoire, like storage unit to hold kind of some of the stuff that I'm gonna need to keep somewhere. And then we're gonna need to do like a massive clearing out because there is so much stuff. We are really earning our lunch today. I am so sweaty. It's humid, it's miserable, but we're working hard and getting a lot done. Now I wanna take care of all like the small little wood scraps. I just got this in the outdoor section at Target. I think it was meant to be like a little end table upside down, but we are gonna flip it up and put our little smaller pieces of wood scrap in here and clean this up. morning of day three of our makeover and we got a lot done and we have a lot to do today. The first thing I did already is I hired an electrician to come and they installed some ceiling fans where our light fixtures used to be so we can get some air circulation when it's a little bit hot. I just know that installing ceiling fans, it's important that they're installed correctly so they don't wobble. We are going to be installing a movie screen behind the pool. And I was having a really hard time finding a black movie screen. So I found one that's white and that's not going to work out here, especially since we're going to be hanging it on my pool screen, which is black. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint the exterior of that uh, black color. So it disappears into the pool cage framing and we're going to do that. We've got some other things to spray paint. Let's see. Lots of little projects today. Mommy, I fell in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a fully clothed swim <laughs> to wake you up for the day. I just watched my handyman scale my pool with cat-like precision to install my movie screen. And I just go back there to do a little cleaning and all in. <laughs> I'm gonna do the next big section, kind of like the closing out stuff, bare-faced. My hair's still wet from falling in the pool. Thank heavens for lash extensions. If you remember from my mood board, I had a boxwood privacy screen planned. Due to the location of my ceiling fans, I decided to modify that plan and put it up against the wall. I'm building this entirely for my scrap wood pile, and I start by cutting down two by threes that we will use as a frame, and then I have two two by threes that are full length and don't need cut. And then on our inspiration board, there 
was also a black base. So I just cut down some of these wider wood pieces from my pile for that, and then I paint everything black and let that fully dry. Well, it's been a long day and it doesn't look like I've got a lot done, but I did. Because it's so hot and humid during the day, I decided to take advantage of our new amazing ceiling fans out here and come out and build the furniture tonight. And so we're gonna assemble that now and then hopefully tomorrow we will be doing a lot of finishing details and finish it up. So I'm getting excited. It's still kind of chaotic out here. It doesn't look like much has happened, but we're in a good spot. Now it's time to finish constructing our boxwood wall and I start by bracing my plywood sheet up against the wall where I want it to be with two two by threes since I'm working alone. Then I just pre-drill some holes into the stucco and I'm going to use some Tapcon screws which are screws meant for cement since our exterior of our home is built with cinder block. We're going to screw it in with an impact driver with a hex top and it will just slide over the top of our screw and hopefully go right in. I won't need many of these since I will be screwing into cement. With those in, I just take my boxwood sheets that I ordered off of Amazon and I will link them below and I staple them into place, leaving some space at the bottom for our base. Next, we hang the giant C that we spray painted earlier. I know people will probably ask me where I got this. I got this from Hobby Lobby probably like six or seven years ago on clearance. It's been kicking around my back patio forever and I decided that this might be a better use of it. <laughs> now it's time to staple in our frame. I used my big framing nailer to do this. And then I also staple on our base pieces that we already pre-painted. And then I touch up all of the nail heads with the same black paint. With all of that installed, I use some green twist ties to attach some twinkle lights to our wall. And then I slide in place an old metal shelf that my husband was going to get rid of. I thought that if I put some little bins in there, I could store my spray paint, my sandpaper, and, and all of my other small items that I use a lot. And now, we have finally made it to the most fun part of all, time to decorate. Wow, did we work hard. I've got scratches, I've got cuts, I've got bruises, but it was all worth it in the end. And now it's time to reveal my back patio. Let's go check it out.
as well as giving the front of my house a little bit of a makeover. I wasn't really sure what to do with this door because I didn't know if like stripping it would even work, if there's something wrong with the door, if we just repaint it and then it would look like this in a month or two. So what I've decided to do is we are getting a brand new door. I decided to treat myself this time. I called in a professional. I pretty much DIY everything on this channel. I've even built my own fireplace, but it's an affordable price that I'm okay with. We don't have to DIY absolutely everything all the time. Before he gets here, we need to go in and paint it. I want to paint it indoors so that we don't have a repeat of that. I just wanted to play it safe. I'm gonna paint it indoors. I've got everything taped off, including the glass that will be in our brand new door. Isn't this gonna be pretty though? And I've decided to paint it in this Modern Masters front door paint. I read the reviews, it seems really good. I've done a full tutorial on how to paint a door. Basically, we're gonna start with the inside and then we're gonna roll it. Honestly, I thought about spraying it, but again, I'm running into the humidity factor and I don't have a basement. So I tried the Modern Masters paint and it was just absolutely terrible. This is what it looked like after two coats. Streaky, blotchy, and just absolutely horrific. And it was giving me nightmares of a repeat of our current door situation. I honestly don't know what all the fuss is about because this just might be the worst paint I've ever used. So then I took a trip and got some Sherwin-Williams paint at Lowe's, one coat of this, and we were absolutely back in business. And the door is ready to be installed. We are going to be making a stencil doormat. I would recommend you doing this wherever you plan on spray painting it because sometimes when you transfer it, it can get a little bit messed up. I took my discarded transfer tape that I didn't end up using and I put that next to the stencil to kind of cover up some of the doormat. And then I take out my blow dryer and you could also use a heat gun. And this kind of helps shrink wrap it onto the doormat, kind of creating a tighter seal. So feel free to use your hand to kind of press it down into place while it's warm. Then we take some blue painter's tape and tape off the edges or anything that you don't want spray paint to get on and then we take it outside or hopefully you've already had it outside and then spray it in truck bed liner spray paint. I couldn't find the stuff that I normally use but my husband had this in the garage and so I gave it a whirl and it seems to have a good outcome. Then once it's dry, peel everything back and it's simple as that. Next, we are going to be making a welcome sign for just left of the door. And once we have everything cut out, take it outside and spray paint it in a glossy black spray paint. And now it's time to build something to put it on. And we are gonna be using up some of the scraps for my scrap pile. I'm gonna be using up some of this faux brick paneling that I had left over. I thought we could turn this into a cool sign. Now, this is kind of made out of like an MDF type product and that's okay because it's gonna be in the covered porch area. Plus I'm gonna frame it out in some real wood and I think it will be okay. <laughs> we'll see how it holds up over time. We are gonna cut this down to 24 by 36 inches. Since our brick is kind of thin and I want to put a frame around it, we need to kind of lift it up and give it something to support a frame. So I'm just gonna use this one by three for my scrap pile. I'm gonna do butt joints because it's gonna be hidden and then we're gonna miter the frame. For the frame, I'm gonna be just using this lightweight, inexpensive one by two, and we're gonna miter this. Before we install the frame, I just take some white spray-on primer and do two coats with that. My original intent was just to use it as a primer, but it ended up looking so good that I just left it. Then I use some antiquing wax by Folk Art on the frame and let that dry. Then we lay out our lettering as we did in Design Studio, and when we're happy with the layout, we go ahead and use Gorilla Clear Gel Glue, or you could use E6000 as well. I wouldn't recommend using hot glue in a hot, humid environment, as it probably won't withstand the elements. After that dries, we're going to add some wood glue to our frame and nail it into place. 
Finally, we add a D-ring hook to hang it on. And for our last DIY for our front porch is a wood round monogram for the middle of a wreath. I take an eight inch embroidery hoop, the part that doesn't have the clip on it, and I attach that to our monogram using wood glue. And this kind of acts as a frame and kind of finishes off the edges nicely. Then I add some clips all the way around to kind of hold it in place as it dries. After it's dried, we're gonna take some gel stain in the color Kona and give it a good coat and then let that thoroughly dry. Now how we are gonna attach this to the wreath is I just took a couple of paper clips. This is what I used. You can use whatever you want. And I glued them with hot glue on the top and the bottom of this monogram. And then I took some twine and tied it to our wreath. Now I would advise against using the hot glue because as I mentioned before, it did not withstand that long and it popped off pretty quickly. And so I had to go back in and use something a little bit stronger. So use something a little bit stronger and let it thoroughly dry before tying it to your wreath. Now to address this window. I love the light that it's bringing into the inside and also the detail that it brings to the outside. I love this door. But even though we're putting up a wreath, we like our privacy. So up top, I had frosted that and I used like a spray on frosting but I'm not convinced that I want permanent frosting on this window, but I've got a really fun hack that uses contact paper to kind of disguise and filter the light, but without the permanent feature to it. And best part is it's gonna cost us $1 because I picked up the contact paper from the Dollar Tree, so very affordable, I like that. So to do this, just cut out your $1 contact paper just a little bit larger than the window pane, lightly mist with a water bottle, and then stick your contact paper to the window and smooth it out using some kind of flat scraping tool. Then you're gonna take a razor blade and cut off the excess as close to the edge as possible. Now my water bottle went a little overboard and was pretty blotchy with the way the water sprayed out. And a few days later, the water bubbles are still dissipating, but should be gone really soon. So don't be alarmed if this happens to you as well. This might take a few days to fully look right, but it does give a nice, beautiful frosted look without the long-term commitment and the heavy price tag. We had a little accident on our driveway. How many of you have had this happen? We just kind of thought that we're left with this and that we might need to rip out some of these pavers and replace them. Well, before we do that, I want to try degreasing it and try to see what we can do. So I got this off of Amazon. It's a degreaser. It had really good reviews. So we're going to see if this works. I also got this little brush. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this on our grease spots, scrub it really good, let it sit for 15 to 20 20 minutes and then I'm gonna break out our power washer and power wash our driveway. For two treatments, I would say this process gave me about a 60 to 70% improvement over what it was before. So I am really happy with these results, but I think that if I give it a couple more treatments, I can get it all the way removed because this has been sitting on our driveway for months now and it might take a little extra effort to get it all the way out. I've got gardenias, jasmine, and I did end up getting some lavender because I thought we needed a little something else and I thought it was like a nice, soft, pretty color that I'm gonna get. just dig home holes and then I've got some black mulch we're gonna mulch all the beds There are no light fixtures here. Well, it's wired for it. I see the, the electrical spots for it on either side. We are gonna add some new lighting on either side of my garage door. I am gonna do this myself and I ordered these light fixtures off of Amazon. Really excited about that. They're really cute. You may wanna call in a professional to do this. This is something that I'm comfortable doing on my own. And one of the cool things about these light fixtures are that they have a sensor that automatically turn them on at night and turn them off at dawn.
Now, after all of our hard work to make our house look really beautiful, it would be a shame to leave something as unattractive as this yellow doorbell. Now, we decided to upgrade to a Google Nest doorbell device, but you don't have to spend that much on a doorbell to make it look much more finished. There are some beautiful black ones that you could get for around $12. As for this one, it's an easy install and the app walks you right through the process, basically holding your hand all the way. I can't vouch at this point for how much we will like the Nest doorbell, but so far, so good. Plus, it just looks pretty darn good, don't you think? Now it's time for all of the finishing touches. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. Do you have a pot that looks a little like this? Black, but it's kind of dull. It's plastic. Well, I've got a hack for you. This is another use for WD-40. This won't be a permanent fix but it should last you a good while what we're gonna do is just spray this on and rub it all over and it will give us a nice like new shine how awesome is this seriously gotta love WD-40 <laughs> After letting the WD-40 dry, we drill a couple of drainage holes into our pot. I believe this is why the previous plants did not do well, because of poor drainage. A little potting soil, some carefully selected perennials that should do well in full sun, and an old DIY, which I will link in the playlist, complete this look. Next, I add some solar powered LED spotlights for accent in the garden. I also ordered some garden lights for by the pathway, but they showed up the wrong color. <laughs> so I'll have to add those later. And of course we add all of our fun DIYs. So one last touch for all of my longtime viewers, you might recognize this. I thought it would look cute at the end of my pathway here. And now it's time to show you the final result. And voila, the finished look. I can't believe we finally made it. All the effort was well worth it in the end. Well, it's the end of the day. It's the end of the episode and I really hope you enjoyed it. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. As for me, I am so insanely hot. If only there was a way to cool off. <laughs> that had to have hurt.